Um, but let's call the meeting to order. Is there any public comment for items not on the ad agenda? Additions or changes to the agenda? All righty. So um, Dirk sent us an email, which is in the folder if anybody wanted to look at it, um, asking to be appointed to the Historic Preservation Commission. And I know David supports that and Scott's here and he supports it. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on that? Um, or would like somebody like to make a motion to appoint Dirk? Looks like Scott has his hand up. Hi, Scott, you wanna say something? Um, just that um, we, there we have no member from Maple Corner and this, this uh, year our project is gonna be all about Maple Corner. So we feel really fortunate to have Dirk say that he was would be would join the commission. Great. Great, thank you. All right, I would make a motion to appoint Dirk um, Van Susteren to the Historic Preservation Commission. Scott, which term? I don't know right at the moment. I'll uh, I, I bet Katie knows. It's a uh, it's been vacant for quite a long time. Okay. Katie, I'll communicate or you ask, ask me if I can. And those are four year terms, Scott? I thought three. It was, it was three. 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 Yeah. So we'll, um, my motion will be to appoint Dirk Van Susteren to fill one of the vacant three year term positions. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, any further discussion? All right, I'm an I. Cliff? Aye. Karen? You're on mute, hon. Aye. Okay, thank you. Rose? Aye. All right, done deal. Tell Dirk, tell Dirk we appreciate his stepping up and being on the commission, Scott. All right, so next up is um, East Calais Community Trust. And I previously um, recused myself. I don't think that I have a, a real conflict of interest because I don't, I'm not receiving any financial compensation, but for the sake of the perception of a conflict of interest, which sometimes is worse, um, I'm gonna recuse myself on this. So Denise, does that mean that I am chairing the meeting for this portion of it? Yes, if you would, please. Okay. So I think um, I was looking back through and I actually couldn't find our mi minutes, but I think it was October 26 that we uh, met with the ECC team, ECC team on this idea of, of um, the town applying for a community development block grant for restoration of the East Callis store. And my understanding is, and we said, we, we gave it like a, just a, sounds like a great idea, kind of, you know, let's move forward that, that discussion. Mm -hmm. And now the group is coming back to us because they're ready for some next steps. And it, and my understanding is, and I'm gonna turn this over to uh, Mark and the folks who are here, but that we don't have to, we don't have, um, we're not formally, we wouldn't be asked to formally approve it tonight, uh, but we are going to be asked to approve some steps in the process, uh, including whether, whether to delegate, we have to hold a public hearing, so the question will be whether to delegate that and what's it, what does that look like? Um, how does the town or select board actually engage and be represented in that process. And then there's some resolutions that we have to approve so that, that they have been approved by the town and they're part of the packet for the application. That's my understanding of the steps where we are. Mark and team, hope I got that sort of right. You got and, it exactly right. And right. with that, I am going to turn our discussion over to Mark. Thank you. And by the way, thanks for taking time for this in the middle of when you got to work on your budget and uh, deal with town meeting. So I appreciate it. We all do. Um, 
basically, first of all, I just want to say at the outset, if you guys have any questions that you come to you outside of the meeting, feel free to call me or any other member of ECCT. And if necessary, we'll bring in Brian and Liz to answer your questions. Um, basically, at the broadest level, tonight, the major pro point of tonight is just to kick this off and to give you a sense of what the process is and give you a chance to ask any questions you might want to ask uh, tonight. Um, but what this really is, is a three-part process. There's tonight, which is just um, a chance to talk. Uh, there are a few things we need to know from you tonight. Uh, they don't take resolutions, I think. Then on the 11th, you're meeting the first meeting of the new year, which hopefully will be better than the last year. Um, the first meeting of the new year, uh, we will ask you to adopt three resolutions. And those resolutions really are precursors to our submitting the application. Uh, and they, I, I enclose two of them. We can describe them in more detail, but they're pretty straightforward, we think. Um, one of them is a resolution saying you have the authority to do it. I'll, I'll talk about two aspects of it in a minute. Another is a resolution adopting very standard federal policies. And then there's a third resolution. And that happens on the 11th. After that, there has to be a hearing, a public hearing. And that it's, it's a process that's mandated by the state. It uses a state form for publication and there has to be publication in the newspaper, et cetera. Believe it or not, that actually can be held by you, in which case the last chance to do that is on the 25th, your second meeting of the month. Uh, or it can be delegated to us. Um, so I'm gonna just go back for a second. Tonight, what we, what, what we would ask of you is number one, just to tell us that it's okay for Liz to go ahead and start this formal state mandated publication processes. 15 days notice publication in the newspaper. That's one thing. Because if you do, we'll start right away because it's, you know, it's a long process. The second thing is we'd like to ask you to confirm that it's okay if uh, the contact people for the grant are in fact Liz and Brian. And the third is we, we'd like you to pick one of yourselves who's the, called the authorizing, whatever, the authorizing individual or something like Liz, what's the name of it? Authorized, authorizing official. official. The authorizing official. It's one of your members who um, is going to have to do almost nothing. <laughs> I mean, we'll do all the work, but they, they want one of you to be picked. You, and that individual could actually delegate some of it to the state treasurer, um, I mean, to the, to the town treasurer. The last thing is to let us know whether you want to hold the public hearing yourselves uh, on the 25th, or whether you'd like to just delegate it to us, believe it or not, that's a function you can do. Liz, would you just take a minute and describe the process of how you would hold the hearing if they don't? I mean, if they hold the hearing, if you guys hold the hearing, it's, ten, you know, it'd probably be 10 minutes on the agenda on the 25th. It's noticed, it's a chance for any member of the public or the town to ask any question. We have to have available the text of the application and so they can, you know, look at it, and that's it. Uh, Liz, what's it look like if it's private? If we um, so, with the caveat that we would need to just confirm with the v Vermont Community Development Program that the um, delegation of the authority to hold the public hearing is still acceptable on Zoom. I don't know why it wouldn't be. What we've done in the past is. Um, literally a person from the nonprofit that's submitting the grant application shows shows up, figuratively speaking now, at a public place, which would be warned on Zoom, and opens the hearing. And any member of the public can join and um, is there to 
just have discussion and answer questions, um, ask questions and have them answered. And um, that would all be documented by minutes. Um, in this case, both Brian and I either are currently or have been elected officials. So we're very familiar with municipal um, procedures as far as public hearings and minutes. And then the public hearing would stay open for an hour. So the Zoom link would need to stay open um, when it was a physical hearing that was held. It, when I did this, I always went to the town or city hall and used the room that the select board would meet in. And I would sit there for an hour, usually with no one showing up and um, just wait and document that the public hearing was opened, no one showed up. Or if one person showed up, you know, just whatever the conversation was um, pertaining to the application and then closing the public hearing. And that's really it. Um, in terms of the application itself being available, it wouldn't be the, um, it's not, I, I don't think we'll be actually writing the whole application um, before the public notice happens, but it, we have plenty of material so that we will provide a comprehensive project narrative there, there are requirements such that you have to put in the amount that you're requesting up to. And so the community development program advises usually that you overshoot so that you're not, you know, telling the public that you're going to apply for 300,000 and then later apply for 350 or 400,000. So things like that are, are familiar to us and just have to follow a set of requirements. Thank you. I, I don't, I want to make clear, we're not, we're neutral, whichever you want to do. So to sum up, and then it's up to you to ask questions. One, I'd like one of, if you would designate one of your number to be the official contact person. They can delegate, we'll do 99% of the work and they can delegate the rest to the town treasurer, but we got to fill in the blank on this, on this, uh, uh, this thing that you would adopt, the resolution you'd adopt on the 11th. And the second is tell us whether you want to which kind of hearing you want to hold yourself or you'd like us to do it. And uh, subject to, we, we check with the state and, and, and let you know, but we're neutral on that. So that's, and that's about it. Sharon, uh, I turn it back to you. And then we, and the third thing is we need time on the, um... We need to at our at the meeting on the eleventh at the very least we have to approve the resolutions, right? Yeah, we have got resolutions to approve on the eleventh, and you've seen two of the three. We'll make sure you get okay. the blanks, and we get all the resolutions to you. Right. So, Katie, Katie, will you put that on the to do list, please? So, um, why don't we do why don't we do it in this order? Why don't I'd like to ask Rose and Cliff if and yeah, John's not here. If they have questions about the, uh, the hearing and or the project generally that will inform our decision on what we wanna do about a hearing. And then, and then Mark, Liz and Brian, I'm gonna turn back to you to quickly uh, introduce us to the resolutions that we will have to approve next time for the project. So Cliff, let's start with you. Thanks, Sharon. Um, before I get to any of my questions for the uh, verbal and visual record, there was a question asked via chat and responded to via chat. Uh, the question is, um, who would pay for the notification publication in the newspaper? And uh, Brian Pine uh, responded and said that the East Callis Trust would, Community Trust would uh, pay for the cost of the public notice in the Times Argus. So just so we have that on file. Well, the question I would ask, um, I don't know, Mark, maybe you can answer it or, or Liz or Brian, is, is there a preference on your side? I know you're, you're not partial, but is there preferences to how the hearing is conducted? Is there something that's better for you? Better for the group? Liz, I, you, I, th am I am, I'm under the impression, Liz, that it's, you'd certainly be willing to do it, right? And you, I think, I think it might be a little easier for you if we did it, 
we have to check with VCDP to make sure. Uh, Brian, do you have an opinion? Um, I think VCDP allows that option in cases where it's not practical for the local elected body to hold the hearing. Uh, and it, it, it would in fact for ECCT, which is, I'm a, I'm a frugal person, is paying us for our time. It would add time to our workload that ECCT has to pay for. So that's one thing, but that's for you all to decide whether that's a, a point that you're concerned with. Um, but I think that it's there only as an option for, or not only, it's really there when it's just not practical for uh, a local elected body to hold the public hearing, uh, or they feel that there's gonna be absolutely no uh, public comment or public concern or interest. And that's subject to every town's own conditions. I think it's, it really is a local decision. Okay, thank you. So can I just ask a question, Brian and Liz, you said um, something about- Jan, 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 oh. can you wait until Cliff and Rose have had a chance to oh, ask okay, their questions? Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Thanks, um, and thank you for the response. Um, that's pretty much my main question. I can uh, go ahead and defer to Rose now. Thank you. Um, Thank you for all the information that you provided. And um, I guess I would be more inclined, more in favor that um, you folks do the public hearing, um, you know, especially if, as Liz has said, there've been other instances where um, in some cases it might be like just a formality, um, being there, being available for the public in case they did want to um, ask any questions. Um, so um, that would be, you know, I. I'm fine with it either way, but um, I think you people are the experts in this and, um, you know, maybe you could do it um, succinctly and that would be that. So, and I also, I would be in favor of um, appointing Sharon as our delegated official or authorizing official if um, she'd be willing to serve in that capacity. So can I ask a procedural question as a board member? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, um, Denise. The public hearing would be on January 25th and you said that we have to leave it open for an hour. Is that right, Liz? Uh, that is standard practice, yes. Okay, so I would suggest then when the notice goes out that you schedule it from six to seven. Um, yes. and, and, a, and, a, and a quorum of the select board needs to be there or not? There's no requirement for a quorum of the select board. Okay, because uh, I don't want to. I don't want to have a meeting scheduled. Have it start at seven. We're trying to meet for other stuff, and right. people pop yeah. in and out to ask questions about this project. Does so, that make sense? so Liz, I would expect that that there's a subtlety here, right? So, if we've delegated it to ECCT to hold the hearing. And coincidentally, it occurs at six o'clock on the 25th, then there's no reason that a, that a quorum of the select board has to be there because it's not a select board meeting. On the other hand, if the select board is, is actually hosting the hearing um, as, as a board, then I would imagine we do have to have a quorum. And then the question procedurally is, um, I guess we could sit around three of us or is it sufficient if we have it as a 10 minute item and take comments at, through the meeting if we choose to hold it ourselves? Do I have this right? You see the problem, Liz, they don't want, they're right in the middle of their budget process. So, I mean, I mean, it sounds to me, Sharon, like there's a slight preference on, of the select board, we, we got to talk to ACC, the state, but if the state right. is okay with it, then you can delegate the hearing. There's a slight preference to delegate the hearing to us. And then we can do that. We don't have to do it on the 25th, right, Liz? Yeah, we just That's pick right. the time and we do it. Okay. Right. But if they say, nah, we'd rather you have the select board do it, 
then we have the problem of this, you don't want to take a precious hour of your meeting and sit around <laughs> waiting for someone to show up. So right. we have to make sure, Liz, we have to tell them, and I don't think we know the answer yet. We have to tell them, A, do we need even need a quorum there? And second, if we do, this is not delegated, it's them holding the hearing. Do we need a quorum there? And if we don't, well, then that's fine. We'll do it at six and they can all show up at seven. Yeah, there's like, so well, part, of, part of my question is if even if we delegate this, do we still have to participate? No. no. Okay. That's wow. the weird thing about this. You've delegated the whole function if you delegate it to us and it's just Liz sitting in a room. Well, and if, 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 if the answer is no, it's better if the select board holds it, but the, the entire select board doesn't have to be present, then I'd be happy to show up at six o'clock on the 25th and hang out with Liz and Mark and Brian um, and Charlotte, and I'm guessing Charlotte and Scott and, and others who are really involved in the project. And um, I, you know, that's, that's not hard. That's, that's doable. So if, if uh, Mark's summary is accurate, let me say it again to make sure that I'm getting, that I'm getting it. Um, board, I'm looking at Cliff and Rose. We have a preference to delegate because of all, because of, as Mark notes, we have budget and the general question of getting ready for select board that's on a very short time or a select board town meeting, which is on a very short timeline at this point. Um, so, so if we have a slight preference to delegating, that's what I would imagine, but I would like one of you to jump in if I'm getting this wrong. And so what we're asking the group to do, to, uh, Mark, Liz, and Brian, is to figure out whether the town and the ECCT is at any disadvantage if we delegate. If there's a disadvantage, then we, we will hold a select board hosted hearing on 25th at six, at which point we will open the Zoom room. I will be present with the ECCT folks to hear any public comments and then select board just starts at seven as a regular meeting, right? And if worse comes to worse, Sharon, I, I don't anticipate this. If, if, the, if we do need a quorum, then, we, then the question is, can we just hold the hearing open for an hour and conduct other business? Right, can we cut that? We just other, don't want to get into a situation where we're taking an hour of the hearing and everybody's sitting around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Agree. Brian? I, I should just point out that the public notice that is required to be published in the paper does notify the public of the nature of the project and gives people a chance to submit comments in writing as well. And that can be done through email and through letters. And so the public hearing is is really just one way to communicate concerns or questions. I just want to make that point. Okay, thank you, Brian. So I think we've, I think if we don't need to make a motion to, tonight on our hearing process, then we've got a clear path of our options, one, two, and three. Yeah. Um, Cliff, and then I'm gonna ask Jan what her question point was, and then I'm going to turn back to the group on resolutions. Cliff, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, and I think Jan had a question, so you're ahead of me. Thank you. I think my question has been answered, but my reality to my life is not to expect a lot of people to show up <laughs> on this meeting, uh, on the public hearing. I mean, I think there's a certain reality. There was a town that held their hearing for planning and nobody showed up. So I have a feeling we'll be sitting or you'll yeah. be sitting. <laughs> That's probably true, but we just have to make sure we got everything covered. Yeah, I'll, we'll find all this out. Uh, okay, Mark, Liz and Brian, give us a quick, you know, two or three bullet points okay. on what each of the resolutions is. We'll do that, but before we do, Okay, well actually let's do it as part of one of the resolutions. One of the resolution is called the resolution for the grant application authority. And it just basically is a series of assertions by the town. This is the resolution that would be adopted at your next meeting, that you have the legal authority to do it and that you have a valid municipal plan and that the regional planning commission says it's the project's consistent with it. We have that, we got that from them. The one, 
uh, and that we'd ask that you're okay with the contact people being Liz and Brian. But it does say that one of you becomes the authorized official and there's a blank, I gotta fill it in. So that's one resolution. Sharon, do you wanna discuss the issue of who that blank person is at this point or should I go on? I think, um, uh, why don't we, so we don't forget about it, maybe we should officially take an action on who that authorized person is because it's a it's somebody appointed by the select board to to act on behalf of the select board so let's take a pause and do a little business guys rose you made rose you're on mute but i think you might be making a motion you're such a mind reader i was talking to you <laughs> i i asked you if you would be willing to be that authorizing official. Yes, I am. Okay, I'll make a motion to appoint Sharon Wynn as the um, authorizing official as far as this requirement of the resolution for the ECCT um, grant application. I'll second that. Thank you, Cliff. <laughs> uh, all right, now we're going to vote. Cliff. Is there any discussion before we vote? <laughs> Is there any discussion? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm ready to vote. Go ahead, Cliff. Aye. Rose? Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay, so that's done. All right, Mark, uh, so there's a resolution of grant authorization. Right, then there's a, a municipal policies and codes resolution where you assert that you either have that you have adopted at any point and if not at any point right now policies and they're all the standard federal policies I've read through them carefully I have not seen looking for alarm bells none went off they're pretty straightforward there's an equal opportunity policy that you won't discriminate on the basis of race sex national origin gender sexual orientation, disabling condition, et cetera. There's a housing policy, which does apply only to housing things where you won't discriminate on the, or in any way on those bases in the housing context. There's a use of excessive force policy <clears throat> that you won't use. The, there's another one that you won't use the money that we get to lobby the federal government to Congress and uh, code of ethics, which looks a lot like your is pretty much covered by your policies that exist for conflict of interest. There's a drug free workplace and uh, an oversight monitoring policy and a whistleblower policy. And I went through them and they're pretty standard and you adopt this resolution and then there, there they are, that's the policies. Okay. The third one I don't have in front of me, could Liz or Brian, could you just mention very briefly the third policy that you want a third? There's another resolution, right? It's, yeah, we will um, write it up as a resolution. There's a requirement that as part of the fair housing kind of anti-discriminatory policies, it's called anti-displacement policy, which because this is federal money says that the, um, the the project impact will not include displacement of any resident living there. And then there's a whole set of regulations that go along with that, that we will comply with and work with the state in terms of developing it, a plan to make sure that the, the renters there are not displaced as a result of the use of federal funds in this project. And those are the resolutions. There is, there is gonna be a moment some point, one of you, you're going to one of you, the job of spending a little time looking at a video on fair housing, right? There's a court, a little course on fair housing, and that's down the road, but that's down the road. Have okay. I missed any? We missed, that's about it, Sharon. Okay. We're, right, uh, Brian, and Liz, right? We're, we're okay? Okay. Yeah. All right. And so I heard you say we have two of those uh policies in our in, in our folders already guys that you can be looking at before the next one and the, the third one will arrive before the 11th is that yeah right? we'll send them to you right away or okay yeah okay uh rose any questions no cliff i don't have any at this time thank you 
Okay. So I think we've, have we done everything that you guys came here to do tonight? I believe so. Brian, Great. Jan, Liz, what have we missed? I think we've covered it all in 30 minutes flat. Scott, great to see you. Hey, thank you again, Sharon. Thank you, guys. And all thank of you, you. For all of you for thank you. Uh, taking time on out of, out of this meeting of all meetings. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Happy, to bye -bye. Happy New Year. Good night, guys. Thank Good you. Night. Okay, so moving on. Um, Toby, do you have anything operations wise to? Um, fill the board in on? Or are you all set? Toby? He's on mute. Yep. Okay, so let's move on. Um, we have a ROW request from um, Ben Jenkins for no. there, Ben? Okay, there you are. Um, for putting, they want to put power poles in along Peak and Brook and so they can have power to their house. Cliff, can you call up the ROW application, please? Yep, working on it. And while he's doing, while Cliff's doing that, Alfred, you've been on site. Yes. And do you have any concerns? Uh, the, the main one that I have is that in the past, when these things come through, it's usually a permit given to the utility. And this one is in the homeowner's name. So that is just a formal question that I have and maybe it's fine, maybe it's okay, but every other right away permit for utilities is usually given to the utility. Yeah, yeah usually they're WEC. I think this one, um, GMP did submit a, I think it's GMP. They did submit a letter. Yeah, I haven't seen it filled out and I guess it's for you guys to sign. You mean the letter? Just, just double check, yes, the letter that's up there right now. I'm just double checking, making sure that that is sufficient because essentially they're gonna, it's gonna be, these poles are gonna belong to Green Mountain Power and they're gonna to need to service them time to time. And so I think the right of way should be theirs. Well, if you, if Cliff, if you scroll down a little further, there's a place for the select board to sign off on approval to GMP, plus Ben Jenkins filed the right of way application. So I think that it's two things and they both, and they both result in the same outcome. Okay. So I think we're the, we've never had one that I remember from GMP. It's usually been WEC, and that's been done a little differently. But Denise, are you saying that? Uh, in so when we so we're being asked to authorize a right of way along Peak and Brook Road because it's in the town's right of way, right? Right. Yes. So the right of way, I I I, the right of way itself though is. Yeah. We would be authorizing and because this is going to be like a document that's recorded in the land records forever and ever so it right. would be it would be to green mountain power not to the landowner so if we go back up to the letter they're asking permission request permission from the select board for the poles guys and wires and i think that the right-of-way application that ben filed we could say on we could say on the um, approval that the approval is to Green Mountain Power for the power for Jenkins and is it Rose last name Rose? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, I would be fine with that just as long as it's you know it's that Green Mountain Power is protected down the road so that if they can come and maintain their poles. Yeah, because right. if we give a right away to the homeowner, that gives the homeowner right away, but it doesn't give Green Mountain Power. Right. So back to the back down on their letter, they're asking for permission for the um, 
the right of way, the way I read the letter. Right. So it seems it seems like that this letter is Mrs. I think this is what you're saying, right, Denise? Said another way, this letter is their version of applying for filling out our, our permit application. Right. So. So if we were to approve and sign off on this letter and then make a notation on the form that we have to sign approving the right of way, we could say there that it's granted to Green Mountain Power. Right. Another yeah. way of saying it is we are granting Green Mountain Power permission to work in the town's right of way. Mr. Jenkins and the Rose, they're not working in the town's right of way. They're going to be the, the recipient, recipient of the power. Right. But, but it's we're, not, we're, yeah, we're granting GMP permission to work in our right of way. Right. But it's not it's not just work. It's forever and ever having right. a right a right of way for power lines. Right. And, and the <coughs> maintenance of the poles and wires and all that. Right. 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 So right. It, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. It needs to be issued to Green Mountain Power. Yeah. Yep. So do we do we normally do this as a as a deeded right of way? Do we like go to Jim and have him draw up a deeded right of way? No. It just gets recorded in the land records just as however we approve it. Right. All right, so it's really important. So can we can we just add Green Mountain Power to the actual permit application? Well, that's that's in part what I'm suggesting that we when we when we if we issue the right of way permit on there we could specifically state that the permit is granted to Green Mountain Power for yeah. work in the right of way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think we treat it as though the request came from Green Mountain Power and ignore yeah. the fact that it came from the, the current landowners. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, because I mean, the only, the other thing I was thinking of is if, if in the future, other landowners want to add to that, to that power line further up Pekin Brook, then Green Mountain Power is going to want the right way, even yeah. more so. I, yeah. I just, I'm just going by what I remember over the years of this happening before, and it's always the right of way permit has been issued to the utility. Yeah, right. I think that, that's, that's what we're saying. Me. That's the only issue that I have. Yeah, and that's, that's what, and that's what we're saying that we're going to do if we have a motion to approve the request by Green Mountain Power for the right of way. Okay, mm -hmm. so that was my one question. Okay. Then the other question is. I wondered if there was any any idea of how many trees they were going to have to cut and whatnot in order to do that. There, there, there definitely is going to be some, and I just want everybody to be aware of that. Ben, do you know? Uh, I don't know how many trees. Um, I, I'm working with uh, Snapping Turtle Tree Service, uh, Pat Carey. I know he's uh he's pretty flexible on this, and he'd be more than happy to walk this line with you, Alfred. If uh if you want to make a date, and we can kind of go over the project. Um, I don't know how many trees. There's definitely a couple lines that are going to be going through uh, some of the turns, so there's going to be you know a handful coming down for sure. Yeah, well, I I, bet, I just see where the stakes are, and it looked like the stakes are zigzagging across the road. Yeah, and that is a great idea. That eliminates. I mean that that lessens the amount of trees that you have to cut. But right. I just want the select board to know that that's some, that's some trees are gonna have to be cut there. Yeah, definitely. Maybe you can get Green Mountain Power to, to mark the trees that they have to cut. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I think that might be, yeah, I think uh, Pat and uh, I'm dealing with Lauren Kelly from GMP. Um, I could probably get them out there again to Mark these. Um, yeah, I yeah, I'm sure that could be done. So really, I think Alfred, the point you're raising for us is we don't like having trees cut in right. our right of way unnecessarily. We like our trees. Said yet right. another way, don't cut trees. You don't have to. Right. Said a third way. So that's that's really the that's the point, Ben and Alfred, as you're working with Green Mountain Power right. is cut only what's necessary, right? That's what you're saying. So we can add yeah. that, we can add that to the uh, permit that um, 
all efforts will be taken to avoid, to have minimal tree cutting. Preserve. Yeah, preserve, to preserve, right. Preserve and cut only as necessary. Yeah. Yeah, I, okay. I, I'm, I'm, I I'd was like to make, make a comment. My name is Jesse Harper. I work with Ben on this project too. We are of the same mind. We want to have the least impact as possible. And I think uh, Lauren did a good job designing it by. Now, Jesse, yep. wait a minute before you keep speaking. What is your, are you a Green Mountain Power person or are you a neighbor or? No, I'm sorry. I'm, I work with, uh, with Ben on the farm project. So I'm, I'm the managing member of, uh, of Clover Properties, which is the owner of the, uh, of the farm. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I couldn't see if, if it'd be nice, it, it'd be great if people could, if we don't see your face, if you could raise your hand to be called on, that would be helpful. Sure, sorry about that. I, I don't, I didn't see that option on my phone, but let me, uh, I'll enable the video. If you go to the participants, you can, there you are. Okay, so what were you gonna say, Jesse? I was just commenting that I thought Lauren did a really good job with um, zigzagging the road and minimizing the impact um, on that. And uh, we work closely with, with Bill, uh, William and Jesse Pelton, who uh, are the landowners of the property. Um, I, thought ben, I thought Ben Jenkins was the landowner. Ben, Ben, and myself are are in the farm project, so both be considered that. You are the property uh, owners. Yes. All right. So anyway, and I just, I, I just, my, my point was, I, I wanted you guys to know that we are mindful of that, of the tree cutting, and are of this, of the same mindset that we want to minimize that, and. Um, most of it is falling in the right of way and uh, we're trying to keep the impact as, as low as, as humanly possible. Okay. Yeah. He was referring to the Peltons are the landowners from Route 14 up to where our property meets theirs. So we don't own all the way to Route 14 off of Pekin Brook Road. We own about a third or a little bit more of it. And then from there, Bill and Jesse Pelton own all the way to Route 14. So we had to get permission from them. Okay. All right. Is there any further comments or questions or um, are you ready, select board, are you ready to um, move forward with this? Any other questions? Rose, Cliff? Uh oh, did Rose disappear? Yes. Oh, yep. yeah. She dropped out. I will make the motion that we approve the right of way permit to Green Mountain Power for the project at, is it 480? Peakinbrook Road. 480, correct. Thank you. Uh, with the condition and instruction that the project be completed with an eye to preserving as much of the tree, the as many trees as possible. In other words, cut as few as only as what's necessary. Okay, and would you like to authorize me to sign on behalf of the board? Yes. Okay, I'll second that motion. Board members, any further comments or discussion? No. Okay, you're ready to vote. I'm an aye. Cliff? Aye. Ro I mean, Sharon? Aye. So Rose slipped out, probably bad internet, but we have a quorum. So the um, ROW application now is approved as noted. And Katie, you got in the minutes, the conditions? Okay, thank you. Beautiful guys. Right. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Nice to, nice to meet you, Ben and Jesse. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good Thank luck. you. Like, likewise, I, I had a quick question. Is there anything else that we would need to do? Um, will we will we get a letter? Will GMP get a letter? How does that work? Well, we'll I'll sign off on the approval form that we have for author for issuing the permit, and you'll get a copy of that as we'll Green, Green Mountain Power. Okay, great. So, I'll um, e I'll email it to Ben. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Very good. All right. Happy New Year.
No, thank, thank you. you Happy guys. New Year. We intend to sign with GMP on Wednesday. Would it be possible to have that in hand by then? I will do it tomorrow. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night, everyone. All right. Next up, um, Hannah Bassage curb cut application 2020-06 on Peck Kill Road. Um, Cliff, maybe you can call that up. Um, Alfred, while Cliff's calling that up, you've had a chance to um, review the site or view the site. I, I drove by there and couldn't quite figure it out, but if you're, you've been there, I assume. Uh, yes, I've met Charlotte there a couple of times. Okay. And uh, the first time was further down the hill and then they thought it would be a better idea further up the hill, which is closer to uh, the, the old house, Ralph, I forget his last name now, but uh, anyway, it's further up the hill, still got sight distance, still has uh, a need for a culvert. What, uh, size, what size culvert, Alfred? Uh, well, it would be a 15 inch culvert, same as all, all driveways. Okay. Um, but the one request, and I don't think it's a big one, but the one request I would like to put into this is that there is a pre-construction meeting before this happens, just so that we, that I and the, and the contractor can go over it because of mainly the fact is that there's a brook that runs down right where Charlotte wants to put the driveway. So it's just going to be a little bit complicated to figure that out. And, you know, and between me and the contractor or the contractor can give me his ideas and whatnot, <coughs> like to be part of that. Um, where, um, where's the, where's the brook on this map? It may not be on the map, but it's, it's a, it's a year round brook. It runs quite often and there's a culvert that carries it under Peck Hill Road. And I mean, I think, you know, we won't know until we get there and start talking about it with the contractor. That's why I want to do a pre-construction because okay. um, we may have to move the town culvert, which I'd be totally willing to do um, depending on where works the best for getting up over that little bank to getting to the, the level spot where they want to build. And what would be what would be the cost if we had to if the town had to move our culvert? Um, well, it probably would be a, a day's labor with two guys and an excavator. Mm -hmm. And if the culvert needs replacing, we would probably replace it at that point. I believe it's a 15 inch culvert now, so it would probably want to be upgraded anyways to a to a 18. You so, mean the town, the town's culvert? Yes. Okay. Uh, Is that and, something and we've... And it's possible that it doesn't need to be. I just know that the configuration of where, where Charlotte pointed out where she wants the driveway is a little bit challenging. Yeah. You know, because there's a stone wall there, there. There's a level spot up above. It's probably 10 feet in elevation higher than our road. Um, and there's a brook involved. So I, I think there's just needs to be some wiggle room there and some ability to work together and do what's best for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can incorporate that into um, a permit if the board decides to issue a curb cut permit. In incorporate, yeah. Denise, are you saying the costs? The co Well, I guess the pre-construction meeting would probably determine if there's gonna be costs. And I'm not sure, um, We've never, I don't remember ever having to do this before, but it seems like the cost of upgrading the, I don't know how the, I, I guess I want to hear from board members, how you feel about um, the town paying for or not paying for. Well, I think, I mean, I'm not a board member, but I think that could be determined later. I mean, we're just, we're just talking about the permit right now. And all I'm asking for is just a guarantee that I'll get notified or that I can have a site visit before construction starts so that we can have that conversation. 
Right, but if we issue a permit, we would want to maybe put something in the permit um, with regard to that so that we kind of have a placeholder. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It sounds like, I mean, is there such a thing as, um, you know, approval or, uh, you know, sounds, sounds, sounds really cool <laughs> and come, come back after you've done that visit and you have, you know, you've determined for sure where that curb cut needs to go and what costs are associated so that we can build all of those things into the actual approval of the permit. Well, I, I certainly don't want to hold their project up. I mean, just, just for a curb cut. I mean, I don't know that I'm assuming they want to start in the spring, but, but spring's a few months away. Yeah, it's December, Alfred. Even though it, there's no snow out here, half. I know, the time. but but you're saying you're suggesting that I we wait on the permit until we can have the site visit. Is that correct? I don't think that's what she's saying. No. Well, I, I guess it was what I was saying, but yeah. I don't. I but all all I want is what I want is to be able to approve a curb cut in its actual spot. Um, and have all of the conditions and costs built in to that approval. And that's why I'm saying we could put in a conditional phrase that says if the town has to replace the culvert, our culvert, you know, maybe we wouldn't charge for the time, but we might charge for the cost of the culvert if we have to replace it and upgrade it. I would charge, I would, uh, actually, Denise, what I heard was kind of the opposite, that that the, we might in any, it might be time to replace, you know, it, we might replace the culvert because it makes sense to do it while we're moving whatever, we're moving the brooks path, but we're moving the, where the brook passes, if I understand this, because of the project. Right, so but the, I don't time, mean... the time to do that, I would want to charge the time to the project. I and have the know. town maybe incur the cost of the new culvert, you know. The, yeah, the, I don't know how we would do that. I don't know how we could charge for the town's time. I could see how we could charge for a culvert. Hmm. Cliff, and then and Cliff, and then Charlotte. Actually, Charlotte had her hand up before me, Denise, so I'll- Well, yeah, forward. but I wanna give board members a chance to talk first. Okay. I. Alfred, a uh, question I'd have for you, um, rough idea of the cost of the, if you had to go to an 18 inch culvert, what the cost of that would be? Uh, new culvert is around 300 for the pipe. And then, like I said, the, the machine time, you better part of a day with two guys. So the machine is $100 an hour. If you got eight hours in it, it would be 800 bucks. Plus so these, the labor. I mean, that's on the very high end of things. Right. And I honestly am not trying to hold this job, this, this project up or the permit. I just want to be able to have a conversation with the contractor when this work goes down. Yep. Yeah, I mean, only because it's a tricky spot with that brook and, and where the location of the driveway wants to be. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I guess it, going forward, it would have been helpful if, this this conversation if you had raised these issues and met with charlotte and scott about these concerns and had some ideas and answers before we get to this point because now it makes it difficult for you to raise these issues now and well we i don't i think it's a doable project i i really do i don't think it's a, a game a game changer i think it's just something i want to be able to Look at it. Why can't we just say that you know uh, the permit is honored if, as long as there's a pre-construction meeting, and then Charlotte and Scott are pretty reasonable. I think we can work out a deal at that point whether the the town needs to replace the culvert or not. No, I, I hear you, Alfred. The the point, the reason that we would want to put it in the permit is because. If somebody else comes along and wants to do the same thing, we're sort of setting a precedent of how we would handle this. 
So that's the reason to put stuff and conditions in the permit so that everybody is treated the same way. It's fair. Everybody knows what to expect. Right. That's all. Also, I know that I know that Charlotte and Scott are very reasonable and very accommodating folks. Other people might not be. Right. The only condition I'm asking for is that we have a, a conversation before the work happens. Right. But that conversation might involve the town having to replace one of our culverts. So that's why this that's why we would put something in the permit. Yeah. So that it's on the record of what we expect. Um, Sharon? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's exactly it. The permit is the place where things go on the record and get recorded as part of the land record. And that's the that's what's really important and tied tied to the precedent. But things that we approve knowing that we're going to work something out later, even even though with Charlotte and and Scott, that may all work out just fine. We still need to be crystal clear for all the reasons that he's said. So can we can we ask Charlotte to move the curb cut down the hill a little bit so it's below our existing culvert? Well, uh, Charlotte's been wanting to say something, so I want to give her a chance to okay. chime in. Me too. <laughs> well, um, thank you. I, I actually think Alfie's idea is a really good one. <clears throat> and um, as Alfie mentioned, this was the second um, place that we identified for a, a, um, a drive. And the reason that we moved it is because Willie Sayers is the person that we would be using. And as many of you know, Willie has done a million of these things or probably at least hundreds. So when he said, oh yeah, we can do this and preserve the existing town culvert, I said, okay, you know more than I, but I think it's a really good idea to get Alfie and Willie talking together. And that's not a problem. I think that's maybe the best um, solution of all. So, and, and Charlotte, is there time to do that before oh, we have to? Oh, sure. No. So we don't have to approve this tonight. Oh, well. Um, what if we What if we granted preliminary approval based on Alfred meeting up with Willie Sayers and coming back to the select board for final approval, depending on what you find out? You can go. Right, right, in including <laughs> including the understanding that we may very well pass costs to the town back to the project. Okay. Yeah. Right, but this would at least give them the opportunity to get started. Would that work for you guys, Charlotte and Scott? That sounds good. We've, we're also perfectly open to including in the permit that we would bear any costs um, of cost to the town of accommodating our right of way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't we, why don't we, Here's what I'm thinking uh, just off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. The permit application, um, there's a form that we fill out to grant approval. I think we could grant preliminary approval on that form and say it's preliminary approval based on um, the road commissioner and the contractor getting together and looking at the site and Alfred bringing back to the board um, his interpretation and then we could grant final approval but that way at least you could get started does that make sense to anybody it does and can we denise can we tie a meeting date so alfred knows exactly when we're expecting to hear from him um do you think that you guys can get this done and be available for the 11th of january i don't know i i would have to i need to talk to willie it's up to willie and up to alfred's availability would that work for you, Alfred, if Willie's yeah, available? I, I can meet anytime during Okay. During so why tomorrow. don't we shoot why don't we shoot for the eleventh? Okay. If something comes up and that doesn't work, um, Alfred and Charlotte, you need to let us know. Okay. Does Good that make enough. sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So could we get a motion to grant preliminary approval as we've discussed? 
So moved. Uh-oh. Now Sharon and Rose are both gone. Oh. Sharon, are you there? Yeah, something happened. And Rose has been in and out, I don't know how many times. She's coming back on. Who is? Oh, Sharon, there you are. And there's Rose again. Rose, can you yeah. Me now? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to step away just for a couple minutes to see what I can do to reduce the drain on my the internet in my house. Okay, so we're making a motion um to grant preliminary approval as we discussed. Does somebody want to second that? And I didn't did you, hear it because yeah. I keep losing connectivity. Yeah. And I missed the I missed the date that Alfred's coming back. We're we're going to shoot for the 11th. Okay. Could read. you read back the motion? Yes. Cliff Emmons made a motion to grant preliminary approval based on the road commissioner and the contractor meeting and looking at the site and the road commissioner bringing back to the board his interpretation. Final approval will be considered then, meeting date January 11. And can, oh. and, and then I'd like to make a friendly would, amendment, Sharon? Yeah, I'd like to make an amendment that that formal approval will include or may include um, a statement about the costs, town, cost. town costs being passed to the project. Can we can we just can we just hold off? I mean it's only two weeks. Can we just hold off until Willie and I can meet and then finalize the whole permit? That's fine. That's, what, that's, that's what we were saying a few minutes that's ago. What we, no, right, that's what we I said know, a few I minutes ago. I didn't argue about. that point. Uh, Charlotte said that she wanted, she alluded that she wanted to get it done. I'm, I, again, I don't want to hold this project up, but with this, with this information and the fact that we need, I need to meet with Willie, I think let's just wait on the whole thing until November 11th and then it can be approved one shot deal. January 11th. Is that, is that work for you, Charlotte? Yes, indeed. I think that's a good suggestion. Thanks, Alfie. Okay. All right. So this will be back on the agenda for the 11th. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Uh, thank you, Charlotte. Thing. Scott, thank you. Oh, I and I want to thank um, Alfie for taking the time to meet with me and and look ahead and look at the different choices we had. And um, also, Bob has been really helpful to me in this process too. So I want to thank him. Um, all these guys who are willing to come. Uh, take a look and meet um, it is a big help. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up, truck. So um, thank you for getting us some information. Um, all the questions that you know we would ask. Um, so Alfred or Toby, do you wanna take us through the truck? Yes, well, um, things have changed a bit. I called the company today uh, that owns the truck I wanted to purchase and it's sold. Uh, mm -hmm. I, as you know, I thought we were, we were having a meeting last week and I asked to be on the agenda, but you weren't meeting, so. Right. Um, I know, can you think, imagine we took a Monday off? Yeah, well, I just, <laughs> I mean, so at any rate, I, I asked the dealer if he would hold it until that following Tuesday of last week, and he honored that, but this week it's gone. Okay. So I have got some more feelers out for a different truck that, I, that will fit our needs, um, but I don't have one right now. Okay. So... I'm wondering, first of all, is this an idea that you guys will support? I think if it's the right price, I mean, this truck that you were looking at sounded like it would work. Okay. Well, it, it certainly, I mean, I felt good about it. It was, they were giving us pretty decent money for our spare. And I went and looked at the truck, test drove it. I talked to the previous owner, the road commissioner for um, Glover, 
and mm -hmm. also the employee that drove the truck and they both loved it. They had nothing bad to say about that truck. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with that and my looking at it, I really thought that was the winner. Yeah. So now I got to go back and do some more homework, but I just want to make sure that you guys are thinking it's a good idea before I do all that extra work. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, to, for me, this truck sounded like it would have worked. I would have supported it. Okay. Any Cliff? other? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, if, if we are in a position to uh, update that older vehicle and it makes sense, then obviously we would support it. Um, bummer that we, we missed this one. Um, one question I would ask is there's a, a line item in the budget that we're working on for repairs and one of the reasons for the uh, that was cited for why that uh, line has gone up as much as it has is because of the one of the reasons not all the reasons that that repair line item went up uh, but one of the reasons is the older truck the spare truck uh, any sense of how much that could be reduced if we did replace that truck? Um, boy, is that a loaded question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> difficult to answer because, like you said, some of those reasons that budget line item went up was uh, was the tractor, was right. you know other other and the two but the two graders. The two graders are twenty something years old, twenty almost twenty five years old. Mm -hmm. uh, things of that nature. Um, yeah, I suppose we could probably reduce that a little bit by this five-year-old, five-year newer truck. Mm -hmm. um, um, but it's hard to calculate that. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, because you don't know what breakdowns you're going to have. Mm -hmm. Plus, the other issue is reliability. So a lot of times that 2009 truck is not going out of the road because something's broken. Mm-hmm. And yep. reliability is, a, is an issue in the middle of a snowstorm. Understood. Yeah, just uh, I was just curious. Um, obviously, we got to do due diligence, and if there's a way to uh, save some money, we're gonna we're gonna look at it. But understood, and thank you for the response. So I think the other thing we need to address is the flexibility of the select board to react to a, a possible purchase of a used piece of equipment. I mean, had we had some way to have a special meeting or understand what the time limit was to, um, to move on a truck that was available, uh, I think we need to make sure you guys are willing to move quickly because opportunities exist for a very short period of time. And waiting for a full scheduled select board meeting is not necessarily going to meet that need. Well, if somebody had, if somebody had given us the information um, that you did, and asked and explained that timing was of the essence and would we be willing to meet for a special meeting? We might have done that, but if you don't say anything, then we don't know. Right. Well, with this, with this particular circumstance, I thought, you know, I thought for sure that there would be a meeting last Monday and yeah. then the time frame wouldn't have been so crucial. Yeah. But we're, I think Toby's thinking about the future. If I find a truck, tomorrow or, or, you know, and I can get them to hold it for one week, but maybe I can't get them to hold it for two weeks. Right. We're meeting on the fourth, probably the 11th. Um, I don't know about the 18th, but we're definitely meeting on the 25th. Well, okay. we, we might not find another truck for a month or two. I'm just saying that, um, I just want to make sure you guys are willing to have a, a special meeting and deal with this because the opportunity is very, a very small window sometimes. Yeah, no, I understand. Well, we hear you, but we need, we need the communication on your end to understand why it's, why it's urgent. And we need the information, which is, which what you provided was great because you know the questions we're going to ask. So if you come up with another truck, you know the questions we're going to ask, um, and we have to know know and understand the timing of that so that we can be um, accommodating. So I'm sorry, I had to step away, guys, but I understand what I'm getting from what I what I've heard is that we that this truck is gone. Right. Okay. Yep. 
All righty. Can we move? Are you are you done with the truck, Alfred? Uh, I yeah, just want to. I just want to underscore that. Uh, yeah, the 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 laying out of the facts and the background. I know Denise already said it. I'm just. I want to. I want to underscore it. It's important to to all of us having that having the background, having the details, and knowing that you guys have really looked under the hood and kicked the tires on both the need and the homework around whether this you know truck that you found is the right one for us. Yes, well, I can assure you I kicked the tires and I looked under the hood. I talked to the previous owner in detail about this truck. That's why I was certain. I, I don't buy equipment without looking at it. I know that has happened in the past, but I do not. Yeah. So I will give you definite details of the next truck that I fall in love with, and you will know everything about it. Okay, that's what we need to know. Thank you so much. Yes. Thanks, Alfred. Thank you. Thanks, Alfred. All right, are you done right. with me for the night? Yeah. Yes, Happy New Year. Okay, same to you. All right, take care. <laughs> Bye, all. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you, Toby. Thank you, Toby. Yeah, I'm sticking around. Okay, that's fine. Um, hey, Chance. Happy holidays. Thanks, you too. I saw, what did I see? I oh, saw something, you. I saw something, um, I don't know if it was on the news or what it was, where you guys did some kind of a parade for somebody that was turning like 93 or 95. That was yeah. awesome, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Ken King was a former chief of the Woodbury Fire Department. Ah. And his wife passed a few weeks yeah, before his birthday. Uh, and uh, oh. somebody had posted something. Uh, so we, we uh, voted him in as a life member, which should have happened years ago. And it may have, but there's no records. Yeah. Uh, so we voted him in as a life member, like we do most of our old retired guys. And uh, we took him up the fire plate in a t-shirt and uh, wished him a happy birthday and brought the trucks up. We ran the sirens long enough so half the town heard it so yeah it was nice yeah no nice job thank it was nice a very nice thing for you guys to do so here we are um cliff can you call up um the documents that chance gave us and we ask you to come every year just so we can say hi <laughs> right it never um, any, anything it never you want to give us enough you want to start talking to us about um, yeah. your budget. Yeah, the budget, uh, you know, the budget went up uh, minimally as much as we could uh, cut off other places. You know, if you look down through the line items. Yeah. Uh, there was the, the uncontrollables that we have no control over, you know, insurances and dispatching and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We cut down, uh, you know, on the firefighting yeah. gear. What's that? Does Woodbury use the same Capital West dispatching? Yes. Okay. Um, we cut down on, uh, you know, we, we pulled out where we could, you know, like under firefighting equipment. So instead of buying three sets of gear, we'll only buy two this year mm -hmm. that we're looking at. So we, we cut here and there to try to make it, uh, as flush as we could. Um, you know, your, your overall budget was a 1% increase, which is mm -hmm. 340 bucks, $342. Oh, we really appreciate you looking at every line item and considering, you know, the cost to the taxpayers and the memo that you do, which spells out exactly what you're looking for is very, very helpful. So we don't have to go through well, line I've after found... line of budget items to try to figure out what you're asking for. It's really helpful. So thank you. Oh, no, not a problem. It's, it's easier for me too. When I first took this over, there was a lot of miscellaneous columns and uh, I got rid of those. <laughs> I don't like yeah. miscellaneous. It's hard to remain transparent when you have miscellaneous stuff. So Right, and we really appreciate having the percentages because we look at that. Yeah, well, that, and that's, that's uh, you know, where I start trying to cut when I see things that don't look right. So, yeah, again, you know, it works out good. It's it's beneficial for you guys and for the Wood. I just actually left the Woodbury uh, Select Board meeting just before I came here. So I've uh, doubling up meetings tonight. And, uh, well, we at least you get, it all done, you get it all done in one night. And that's, that's the benefit, you know, and it's all yep. before New Year's, so we can celebrate on New Year's Eve. Uh, you know. And do we have, and are we set up now so that we don't have that issue that we had, well, was it last year where 
you needed payment of something, but we hadn't, we couldn't pay it until like July. Did we fix that problem? We did. We moved, we moved that payment to October 1st. Okay. Um, which, which helped you guys some this year we we've, we've gotten things, uh, enough in the in the positive where we can hold off to January 1st for both towns, which allows both towns to get all of their tax revenue in before they have to pay the right. 71,000 for that capital replacement. So it took two years to get there, but we're there. Um, so we'll, we'll be doing this year, January 1st, instead of October 1st. So it'll okay. buy you back an extra three months. That extra well, months. we really appreciate you working that out to help us. Well, it, 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 you know, it, com it comes back to, you know, one hand washes the other, uh, you know, the select board and the, the voters have uh, supported us. Uh, so we need to try to make sure we're doing the same back. Hey, Bob, Bob, I think you, we're getting feedback from you. Can you put your microphone on mute, please? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Um, anything else you want to tell us about? Um, uh, right now, we uh, one of the reasons I met with the, the Woodbury Select Board is that the, the uh, department, uh, as Denise knows, and I'm not sure anybody else is really truly aware, we've been working for some time on a building. Uh, this project started about seven years ago, and it kind of got beat up about five years ago, and it dropped. And then we asked Denise and a few others to come talk with us starting last year. And COVID was friendly enough to come and interrupt all of that work as well. Um, but we've, we've gotten basically, we've gotten the opinion of probable cost um, for a much smaller building than what we were looking at seven years ago. We were looking at a 7,000 square foot building um, that was gonna cost about $2.8 million. This one is about 4,000 square feet, which means we'll still have to use one of the existing buildings that we have now. Um, but we'd be able to get rid of one of the buildings. The cost is going to be about 1.2 million. And due to some odd language, um, part of the odd language issue, um, the fire department decided to ask Woodbury voters to fund this bond, as this is a Woodbury fire station building and it's Woodbury property. Um, if something were to happen to the Woodbury, and I'm not saying anything's going to happen to us, but if something were to happen to us uh, as a nonprofit organization, if we dissolved, um, the physical property would return to the village of Woodbury. Um, so we didn't feel it was fair to saddle you guys with that. Um, so we're moving forward, asking the Woodbury voters to fund a $1.2 million new fire station in the town of Woodbury. Would you be coming back? Well, Bob, 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 you got to put your microphone on mute, please. I'm going to learn about this. Thank you. So would you be then coming to Callis to um, ask us for an increase in operating or anything like that to help pay for the, the building? Nope. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, um, um, unless, of course, the Woodbury voters shoot me down. If they shoot me down and say, hell no, we're not paying for it all, then I'm going to have to back up and figure out a different approach and figure out how to get both towns to pay, I guess. But um, orig originally, we were really hoping to have an aggressive fundraising campaign this year. And like I said, yeah, COVID, COVID, COVID has not been friendly. <laughs> um, we are launching tomorrow a fundraising campaign that deals with the brick pavers and a brick garden that would be part of the new property. Um, and I plan on posting that in many, 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 many spots. Uh, so if callous voters felt generous and wanted to donate money in that way, they could buy a brick with their name on it or, you know, in memory of a loved one. Um, but no, this is, this is going to be kept out of the operating budget. Uh, the only things that should be part of our operating budget moving forward are the items that you guys already have, which is the truck replacement fund, which will be going away as soon as those loans mature in uh, three years. And then the capital replacement fund, and then the, obviously your your regular operating budget. The uh, mm -hmm. cost of maintaining a building would still be on there, um, but the cost of the bond, if all goes well in Woodbury, would not appear in a later budget for you guys. Okay, Callis Select Board members, um, I'm going to go around. Rose, do you have any questions or comments? 
Um, when do you plan to bond for it? Is it this upcoming town meeting or in town meeting of 2022? It's the upcoming meeting uh, is when we'll be asking for the bond vote. Um, obviously, you know, we're, we're not a municipal department. We are, by the way, I love the jacket. I had one of those just like that. I, I see your vest. Um, we, we, uh, we're, we're not a municipal department. We're a nonprofit organization, but because we contract with Woodbury and you guys, of course, mm -hmm. um, the banks allow us to buy into the municipal bond system. So originally we'd be getting a construction loan through the union bank to pay for whatever the cost is. And then when the cost is done, $1.2 million or less, hopefully through the donations, that's what would actually become the bond vote. Mm -hmm. um, so the bond wouldn't actually probably be purchased until the next cycle, which would be next spring. Um, we'd right. be asking the town for it this year, but the, the bond actually wouldn't be due for the next year because they wait until you're, uh, your construction project is finished and then they they convert the construction loan in the next cycle through the bond buying good sounds good thank you did we lose denise i don't know did we i would say everybody got kind of still for a second i wasn't sure if i got <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, I, I, sorry, Cliff, you're next, and then Sharon. Okay. I got to go find out why Ruby's having such a big mouth. <laughs> um, Chance, I'm just curious, do you have any sense for the likelihood of the bond passing? I think it will. I think, you know, this is one of those things, you know, uh, you're asking for $1.2 million, sounds like a lot, but in the day of fire stations, that's really a drop in the bucket. Um, you know, uh, fire stations, the one we were looking at before was almost $3 million. That had a lot of space, a lot of room. Um, but the issues that were surrounding that particular project was it wasn't inside the village limits and the cost of $3 million. So we've cut the cost about half because it was like 2.8, we're at 1.2. And it's right across the street from our current fire station. So it's in the village. So the two biggest holdbacks we've addressed. Um, doesn't mean we won't have more holdbacks this year, um, you know, but we're chopping away at the tree a little bit at a time. And hopefully, uh, you know, once again, the, the voters will support, you know, what, what is transparent and reasonable. Well, we'll We'll be thinking good thoughts for you. Good luck on the on the whole process. Are are has the town already decided to do the town meeting by Australian ballot? I think they're voting on that tonight, just like you guys are. I, I, I believe that's the assumption everybody's pretty much come to is uh, most of us can't afford to wait until the summertime to have a have an outside town meeting and still pay our bills. So I think most towns are going with the Australian ballot now. Yep, that's it. That sounded like what we was planning. Yeah, that's the feedback we're getting as well. Thanks, Chance. Appreciate sure it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Brett, Sharon, do you have any questions or comments? Um, not not on the on the bond, and I'm sorry I missed the beginning. I'm I'm struggling with my internet here tonight, Chance. Um, so I'm just this may or may not this may be out of out of scope for the, tonight's discussion, but to let Chance know that we have started with the East Montpelier Fire Department, the, but just by raising the point with them that we would like to separate the vote at our town meeting and vote on emergency budget separately. And I don't believe, or I'm not aware, I should say, that we have the same restrictions on doing that with uh, Woodbury as we do with East Montpelier, but just kind of let make Chance aware of that. I think every year in the past, uh, the, the board has made the decision with us, for our budget anyway, um, whether they were going to put it into their budget or whether they were going to keep it separate. Um, so we generally look to you guys as to how you want to do it. And if you want to put it in your budget, I write it as such. And if you want me to put it as separate uh, articles, then that's how we do it. So that's fine with me either way. You just you guys usually let me know how you want to do it. So that's how we'll yeah. go. Thank you, Chance. Yeah. That's refreshingly flexible. 
Yeah. Yeah. We really appreciate working with you guys um, and your flexibility. And so is, is that what you guys are planning this year is having everybody do separate articles? Cause I'll write them up tonight if that's what you're looking for. Well, we can't this year with East Montpelier, but we're going to give notice at some point to East Montpelier. Um, we have an interlocal agreement that we need to update. So we have a process we have to go through for that. Um, so I think I think in previous years we've done it with articles. Um, I'm just looking for my draft. For us, you mean? That, yeah, I think that pretty much last, we've done it. Um, last year, last year you guys took the budget under yours. The year before we did it articles because that was the year we asked for the capital replacement fund to be created. So the voters voted on our individual that's right. articles that year. Yep, you're yep. right. Um, I guess I'll have to let you, we'll have to let you know. Okay. I'm not sure what we're going to decide, but I will let you know. That's fine. Okay, any more questions for Chance or can he go have a dinner? Oh, Cliff. Uh, Denise, I just took a quick look at the draft of our budget and it is currently in the budget as it stands for the general for the general budget yep yep i think we would probably I'm trying to think how we would do that i know when we used to do it from the floor um somewhere you have to show what that amount would be and the cost of on you know the tax rate so all right anything else for chance or can we let him go have dinner I, I miss meeting with you guys at the station to talk about the building. I'm telling you, this this has just been absolutely crazy. I bet. And and now we have to drive around with masks in the fire trucks, and you got to run around with a mask until you put a SCBA on. It's just it's just crazy. I can't wait for things to resume some sort of normalcy so you can actually meet with right. people. I like meeting with people in person, so yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and on another note, just real quick, I see Judith is here. As soon as you guys let me know how you want it, uh, I'll be sending those to Judith and also the chief's report. Uh, Paul has already got it ready. We're just waiting for the 31st to click so we can make sure we account for all the calls and then we'll get the, the chief's report and articles or however. Does that work, Judith? Yeah, thank, thank you for the reports. Um, and um, if we decide that we want an article, the deadline would be January 14th, and we can be in communication about that. I'll get them to you the first or second. I don't like waiting until the deadline. <laughs> right. All right, Chance, um, just relay to the fire department how much we appreciate everything they do and how nice you guys are to work with. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Happy New Year, everybody. Be safe. Happy, Happy New Year. You too. Take Thank care. You. Thanks, Chance. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Take care. Okay. We're only a half an hour late. That's not bad. Well, not really, because we had Woodbury on, so that's good. Town meeting prep. Um, Denise? Yes, Toby? Can we move up to the discussion of the East Montpelier fire budget so I don't have to go through all of this? Um, it's okay with me if it's okay with the rest of the board. Yeah, you guys I'm okay with that? that? I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. What would you like to, what would you like to discuss, Toby? Um, I'm just here to answer questions. You guys have it on your agenda and, um, I'm not sure what your concerns are. Well, I'm not sure that, I'm not sure, um, about the concerns, but we need to vote to approve or not approve what you're asking us to put in the budget. That's the way the process works. Um, you sent us the figures, which um, Sandra incorporated into the budget. And it, it, Cliff, is there a way to just call up the page of the budget that shows the uh, fire ambulance budgets? Yeah. It's on page six. Hang on a sec. Um, and Toby, maybe you could just review your, the fire department budget went down. That's right. And the percentage then it went down was what percent again? Six percent. Six percent, okay. 
and the ambulance, um, and this is, we talked about this when we had our joint meeting that we agreed, the two towns agreed to over the next three years, starting last year or starting with fiscal 21, to put money in the budget to help pay for staffing. Um, so I just want to remind the board that we talked about this and agreed to this previously. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why there's an, uh, the increase or the change um, for FY22. Mm -hmm. And Callis's share, um, I'm looking for the email that Toby sent. Um, anyways, it amounts to a 17% increase for the ambulance side, but a 6% decrease for the fire side. Mm -hmm. well, and, the, and the reality is that the 12,500 that you approved going forward um, is essentially the, the only thing that has raised the combined budgets because the fire department went down and the increase of other stuff not including salary on the ambulance side offset that same. So essentially the budgets are level funded except for the 12,500 that you agreed to. Right, and that's what we agreed to last year. Just, Correct. To, just to remind the board. Mm -hmm. um, Rose, Sharon, Cliff, comments, questions? I'll go first. Um, I just wanna say that, you know, I support the, um, budget proposed budget request from EMFD for fire and ambulance. And, um, you know, well, I know we've had this discussion before, but I just want to say it on the record um, that I feel it's an essential town service to provide fire protection and emergency medical emergency services. And I know the board has said that it's not a law that we have to provide that for our residents, but, um, I think we'd be hard pressed to find someone in town who didn't want access to fire protection or ambulance. So um, we know um, in my view, we have to provide these services. I think we should ethically, morally, we need to do it. And um, we have to pay more for staffing. Um, we're getting you know, EMS professional people, paramedic level service um, in many instances and you know, you don't know when you're gonna need it and they're always there for us. Um, so I support Woodbury's budget, um, but frankly, you know, Denise, I just wanna say that I, I really felt that your tone when you were talking to Woodbury and Chance, um, that you really were um, overly generous with your gratitude and graciousness. And I almost feel like I hear a little um, sting in your tone at times when you reference EMFD. And so I'm not going to hold back. I just publicly wanted to state that. Um, okay. I think, I think between both departments, they both do a great job and we do need the coverage. Well, thank you for your comment, Rose. That's not my, was not my intention. I think I've always thanked both departments graciously for their service. Mm -hmm. And I don't disagree that, um, we need to provide especially EMT services to our residents. Nobody ever knows when they might need that. Um, Sharon, you want to got any comments or questions? Cliff? Yeah, I would just say uh, echo Rose's sentiment that these are vital services for our community. Um, and the, the challenges of funding them is something that's being faced by every town in this state. Um, and the nice thing is, is we are uh, working with uh, East Montpelier to proactively address this concern about being able to staff our EMTs. And um, it's not cheap, but it would be a lot more expensive if we didn't start working on it now. Yeah. So I, I, strongly, I strongly support the fact that EMFD needs to have the staffing. Um, you know, I think I've said that before, that I understand that they need the staffing. We all want to be able to have the services. I 
totally appreciate, which I've said to, I think every meeting that we've attended, the work that they do, it's not easy. Um, and they volunteer their time, most of the time, to provide these services. Um, so I give them the same kudos as Woodbury. Um, and I would make a motion that we approve the East Montpelier budget as um, given to us back on December, I think it was the third, the third we went with EMFD, the 10th we met with East Montpelier and East Montpelier approved the budget then, but we wanted to hold off and have a further discussion. But I would make a motion that we approve the budget as proposed by EMFD. So I'll second that. I'll second that. Okay, any further discussion or comments? Can we just include Denise in the motion, the actual, um, some the numbers, so they're they're captured in the minutes. Um, yes, we can get those exact figures. I was looking for Toby's email, which I thought I printed off, but I don't. I guess I didn't. Um, I'll put them up on the screen. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Cliff. So we're approving the fire department with a 6% decrease over last year and ambulance with a 17% increase over last year, right? Right. And I want to make it clear, though, that we agreed to this increase of the 12500 um, last year in support of the fact that they need to find people to staff the ambulance. And that's the reason for the increase and that we agreed to and approved that over the course of three years. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 12,500 of the 16. Um, yeah, correct. yes, correct. Okay, Katie, you got all that? Can someone please, it's so small on my screen. Can you read me the amount? I do have all that information, but I don't have what the total amount is um, proposed to. Can you see it now? I can the, read it. The, the 205000 It's for the FY22 budget. Yeah. Fire department is $60,977. And that was a decrease of 6%. So the fire department worked really hard to find savings, which we really appreciate. And East Montpelier Ambulance is $111,468, which includes mm -hmm. the 12500 dollars that we agreed to over the next three years starting with fy21 right so so katie we're not approving that whole bottom 255 646 that's a that's a global that includes everybody we're just voting to improve approve the east montpelier fire department portion of that the fire for department the and the ambulance of, right for a yeah. total of 172,445 dollars yeah. Thank you, Cliff. You're welcome. Okay, was that a second, Sharon? I think Rose seconded. Oh, Rose seconded. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready to vote? Yeah. Okay, I'm an I. Rose? I. Sharon? I. Cliff? I. And Toby, take the same message back to East Montpelier folks, fire department folks. We really, really appreciate their service and um how much we appreciate everything they do great thanks appreciate it okay thank you thank you good night. thanks toby good night toby good night okay let's talk about town meeting australian ballot we got a last minute memo which i sent to everybody from craig line um asking some questions and he wasn't able to join us tonight um we, you we to, talked, you uh, want me to bring those up on the screen denise or how do you sure. want um, to can i just can i make a suggestion yes <laughs> i also sent a memo right after he sent that with um that compiles what the facts are at this point which i think might be more helpful than looking at his questions because his questions are answered by the memo that I sent. 
Oh, I guess I didn't see that. Yep, I can pull that up. I mean, we can look at both, but I don't want to go down rabbit holes if if the questions are already answered. Yeah, I, st I still don't see your memo, Judy. Um, I sent it in an email. Yeah, yeah I, I got didn't. it. You did, okay. I didn't get it. I hit reply all to his memo. I'll pull it up. Well, anyways, just, let's just, if we could just pull it up, that would be helpful. Yeah, I didn't get it either. Huh. Let me send it again. Did everybody get the one I forwarded from Craig? Yes. Okay. I got it. I did not have time to read yep. it. Um, let me see. I put it somewhere. Okay. So yeah. So some of his questions, um, Judy has answered. Um, he did ask a question, and I know that um, we talked about this. And which question was it? It was why can't the why can't the town meeting be held the same way an informational meeting can be held? And we've been told by um, Secretary of State or or the legislature that we cannot hold votes via a Zoom meeting. We have to do it by Australian ballot. So that's the answer to part of his first question. And I think that's what. Um, Oh, is that what you were referring to on that bullet, Judy? Under emergency legislation? Right. I was kind of preparing to give an overview rather than yeah, responding to Craig. Okay. Um, that would be an easier process for me, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to start with the, you know, this is, uh, these are notes from my training um, with Will Senning, who is the Director of Elections at the Secretary of State. And so these are direct, uh, you know, text from his training. So I just want to set the, the tone or, you know, kind of the overview is that at this point, floor meetings can be conducted for town meeting legally, but they must adhere to the Department of Health regulations and the, you know, accessible uh, all, all the accessibility and all the COVID relation, all the COVID requirements. So um, I don't think there's any way that we could hold a traditional meeting um, and have it be safe. I, I think most towns are coming to that conclusion. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise you would be um, reducing the number of people who can participate. So I think that's kind of a basic premise to start is that while it's legal to hold a traditional town meeting, um, it's exactly what is not uh, we're not able to do because of the pandemic. Um, there might be some requirements like no more than 75 people or 100 square feet per person, that kind of thing that would be really difficult to accommodate. Um, so at that point, um, based on that information, Judy, do you have any idea how much how many people that could accommodate roughly at the school? I, I wouldn't, I don't have the math for that in my head. I mean, I think a um, hundred square feet per person. I think just, just people lining up and getting in. And um, frankly, I don't want to put myself at that risk. I don't want to mm -hmm. put Barbara at that risk. Um, no, it's just, a, I'm just asking what. No, I don't, I don't know. No, I mean, okay. we, we usually have 150 to 200 people plus voters coming through. Yeah. So, um, you know, I would think that around 75 people would be the limit at, in yeah. one place all spread out. And I just think it would be really challenging to do that safely. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm disagreeing. I'm just asking so that we make sure we cover all the yeah. questions. Yeah. Um, so hey, I um, got, I got, I've got something to add here. So I just Googled what's the size of an elementary school basketball court. And the Callus Gym is uh, mo most or all of the basketball court is the gym is taken up by most or all of the basketball court, right? Yeah. 
So according to sportsrec.com, a typical elementary school basketball court is 74 feet by 42 feet, uh, which is uh, 3,100 square feet divided by 100 square feet per person. Is that what you said, Judy? Uh, Will Senning said that he wasn't absolutely sure, but that was what he said, 100 square feet per person. So that's 31 people. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Even if, so even if he's wrong by half, or if the size of the square of the basketball court is wrong by half, um, or several times, we're magnitude, at 31 people, we're magnitudes away from being able to hold a successful callous select or town meeting in that venue, which is the biggest one we have, right? right? Yeah. Right. Follow, following proper COVID um, social distancing requirements. Right, right, right. Katie, did you get those numbers? You want me to email them to you? Yes. Okay. I don't, you got them. Yes, you got them. Okay. Okay, well, sorry, Judy, go ahead. So the other piece is that annual meetings and any special elections involving votes of the voters may not be conducted remotely or virtually. So the legislature has not approved that towns, um, municipalities can vote remotely or virtually. So that really eliminates the possibility of having town meeting where we have you know, the image, the screen remotely sent to other rooms and, to, and some people are at home and people are raising their hands on their, on the screen or, or through their uh, Zoom or anything like that. That's not legal. So that eliminates that possibility. Um, so typically adopting Australian ballot has to be voted by all the voters, but under emergency legislation, Act 162, the legislature is permitting legislative bodies of municipalities to adopt the Australian ballot system of voting for this year's local election. Um, and that would be just for this year, it would revert back to our traditional method of voting. And the only way it would ever change in the future is if all, you know, it was taken to all the voters to vote on to change town meeting the way we conduct it. Um, so it would not in any way remain this way. It would just be a one-time pandemic response. But as you can see under the next bullet, you can't pick and choose what you want to have on the ballot. All articles, floor, traditional floor ballot uh, articles and traditional ballot articles would all have to be on an Australian ballot. So it's kind of an all or nothing um, decision. And that's only a one year thing. If we were it doesn't mean we're locked into doing this going forward. Absolutely not. It's just a pandemic response for one year. And that, and, you know, the rest, uh, it goes on to other things, but um, the two things that need to be addressed tonight um, are because all of our planning and we have a, we've sent people a key deadlines list of all our dates that we need in order to just have all the ducks in a row for everything that needs to lead up to March 2nd and to get the warning out and all of that. Um, the, we need the select board to um, make this vote or decision about moving the articles to the Australian ballot. Yeah, and that's, it's on the agenda tonight for us to vote on. Yeah, it was reviewed at the last meeting. So this is the second meeting to look at it. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to tell us under here? I mean, well, we're, there's we a second, that. there's a second decision, but maybe you want to discuss this first before we go on to the second. Right. We item. have, we have two things to vote on. We have vote to approve or not that all articles you voted on by Australian ballot. And then the second piece, as Judy said, is a different vote. Um, probably the first one is the bigger issue. Select, uh, word, select right. word members. Um, comments, questions, thoughts? Rose, do you want to go first? Sure. Oh, it's so sad, it but is. it's the reality. And, you know, um, I appreciate 
Judy's hard work and effort into thinking this through and presenting us all the facts, all the details. Um, and, you know, I support moving, you know, this to all the articles on our warning to Australian ballot for this one year in the pandemic of 2020 that's, you know, captivated all of our lives. So um, I don't really see that we have much of a choice. Sharon just did the math. You know, we can't have 31 or 62 people at the elementary school. That's not going to cut it. Um, we can't do it virtually. I counted how many times I lost connectivity tonight at my house so far. Five times my internet cut out tonight so far. Um, so we're not virtual. So, um, you know, I see no other way to do it. I should, can I say one more thing? Yeah. Um, there is the option of moving the select moving the town meeting to a later date it, it's not an, a, a real option yet because the legislature has to vote on it mm -hmm. to allow towns to move it to a later date which kind of creates a lot of chaos because we might not know if we can move it to a later date until mid-january or later like maybe january 19th so all the planning that we would need to do if we can't move it <laughs> I just can't imagine how that would work. Plus, I was just texting with Sandra, how, what's the latest we could have the meeting and still set the tax rate and not disrupt all of the other municipal budget and tax collection and everything else. And she said that would be mid-May. So I don't see that a mid-May meeting could be held outdoors necessarily. Say, you know, if the weather is unpredictable um, and I mean, I guess that is one other option would be to, but then we would not, you wouldn't really be able to vote on it tonight because we'd need to wait to hear from the legislature. Mm -hmm. okay. And the other thing too, though, what venue, even if we waited and moved it till May and we were outside, what venue, you know, would we be able to be outside and have a parking lot? Either be the, able to, would be the parking right. lot or the cars would be in the parking lot. Right, and hear each other speak and actually, yeah, it's just, uh, it's hard to imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Rose. Cliff? Yeah. Um, we, we have a tradition that goes back hundreds of years and um, think about all of the things that our country has faced over that period of time. There have been uh, wars. There have been other plagues and um, there have been civil wars even, yet uh, democracy has prevailed and found ways to adapt to the circumstances that it faced at any given point in our history. Uh, this, is, this is another such moment and uh, we need to err on the side of safety and caution and for the good of all of the citizens of our town, uh, which is why I would support going to the Australian ballot. It is not ideal. It is not something that I would choose to do uh, willingly, but in this circumstance, I believe it is what we must do uh, to keep all of our citizens safe. Uh, we really dodged a bullet, if you think about it, uh, last year, because it was right after town meeting that this thing blew up. And uh, it could have gone very different for our town if the town meeting had been held even just a week after the date that it actually occurred. Um, the, the idea of, of moving it outside uh, does present another set of logistical challenges as well as um, just throwing a, a bigger monkey wrench, in my opinion, to uh, trying to pull this off under the current circumstances and using an Australian ballot and holding to the original date. But you look at all these things and then you have to consider one other factor. We are all hoping and praying for the best, but there's no guarantee that we're not in the same boat uh, come mid-May, that uh, there's still other options, other possibilities of this thing uh, ballooning again, even with vaccines available. So 
I believe this is what we have to do this year. And I'm looking forward to the following year when we can return to our traditional form of democracy. And I will celebrate that day. Okay, thank you. Sure. Yeah, I agree with everything that's been said. Um, the options, the options are to to have to do Australian ballot, or to uh, figure out some way of socially distancing in person, not doable, virtually. Um, is Cliff just said, and then the third one is postpone the meeting. So we can't we can't do an in person um, because it, with everyone in place we don't have a place in town that would accommodate that. We just went over that uh, a virtual meeting where we are all in various places is a at least on Zoom not actually allowed. And so by extension, I'm not sure any of those other virtuals are allowed either. I would assume under guidance from BCCT in the state that those are those are options are not, not allowed either. They're, for not the allowed. Action. They're not allowed by the Secretary of State. Right, so the, so, so the only thing we could do is either have a venue that we don't have where everybody could be distanced or or push the meeting out for a few weeks. And as a, and I, I think I, I wanted to say, that's a that's a, an allowed option and we it's but not, what we're it, not yet it, it'll be uh, voted not, on yeah. right yeah so that's an important point it's not allowed yet um and as a practical as a practical matter the logistics of managing that making it happen keeping everybody safe while we do all of that that would be a full-time job for all how many of us are in this meeting right now? Uh, six of us plus, you know, plus Sandra, plus Craig, plus anybody else who is committed and wants to make it happen. And I think as as a practical as a practical matter, unfortunately, uh, that that option is not really available to us. It, it's available, but it but it would scuttle every other piece of work we have to do. It's not even necessarily something we know we can do. And again, unfortunately, I think it's important that we make the decision that we can make based on the facts we have right now so that we can be clear in communicating and clear and decisive in communicating what we're gonna do and allow everybody, including ourselves to move on to making that happen. Okay, and I appreciate and agree with all the comments are, that have been made. I've been going to town meeting now for decades and it's something that I've always, I look forward to every year. And I feel badly that we are put in a position now where we have to say, we just can't do that. It's just not safe. We have to think about all of the residents and we don't want to be deemed as a super spreader by having a meeting that doesn't comply with the guidance and the governor's um, directives. And I think that the legislature deciding in however many weeks it takes for them to decide doing an outdoor meeting is going to be really hard to pull off and unpredictable and for all the reasons everybody already said. So I think we have to make the decision tonight to move forward with um, the articles being by Australian ballot. And just again, it's only for one year. We don't have authority to do this again next year and I hope we don't have to do it again like this next year. This is not something that any of us asked for to have this pandemic happening, but we have to figure out how to work around it and work with it and move forward. So with that said, and everybody's had a chance to say, um, I would make a motion that we, um, uh, blah, 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 that we, have the articles for town meeting be voted on by Australian ballot for the March 2nd town meeting. Um, and again, this is only just for this one year. Anybody want to second that or make it clearer? I think we should, I think we should put that all 
articles that are traditionally floor or ballot, just so that it's real. That's really clear. Okay, so I would accept that meant that clarification. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, we'll vote. I'm an aye. Rose. Aye. Darren. Aye. Cliff. Aye. And I think it's fair to say that we're all reluctant and very sad that we have to do it this way this year. Mm -hmm. I, for what it's worth, I did. He, I have heard from at least one, maybe two people, um, that you know, recognizing that that that's what we're going to have to do this year. Yeah. Yeah, I've so, heard from several people on both sides of the issue, but I think this is the responsible thing for us to do. Uh, All right. Noting noting that we have those questions from Craig, and I feel I had them I had them open. Can, um, can we vote on the second thing though? I well, just, we, we I thought we wanted to go through the rest of your comments. Can I just ask if somebody's going to just point Craig to tonight's meeting as a good discussion on the various points that he raised? Yeah, I thought I would send him an email and thank him for raising the issues. Yep. We appreciate it. And, you know, did, we're, we're looking for the, you know, to do the best and things in the best interest of the town. And we hope to go back to our original democracy next year. And then he can listen to the recording and he can read the minutes. I think we were pretty clear on how we feel about it. We feel pretty bad about it. And well, just and so you that, know, I, I, I did send him my notes that you're reading here. Yeah, you and, those, okay. and those notes really do kind of hit on, and, and our discussion hits on many of the points that he raised. And I, I would just want him to know that we, we there, there, there are reasons. It's yeah. not, we're not just, it's not from the gut. It's a, there's rationale and, and reasons. Yeah. I'll send him a response and see, um, CC everybody. Okay. All right, so Judy, do you wanna finish up? Yeah, so the next thing that is necessary to um, review and vote on, um, at this point, because of Act 162, the Emergency Pandemic Act, candidates are not required to collect signatures. So that still holds right now, but what has not been covered by the legislation is the requirement for signatures for public articles. Oh, so it's not, so we don't have to vote. I thought we had to vote on the petitions as well, but it's just the articles or, uh, or the candidates you don't have to vote on. The candidates don't have, they only need a consent form. They oh, okay. need a petition with 14 signatures. So, okay, I, so we don't have to vote on right. that. And for those of you who might be, um, you know, uh, a candidate, uh, the, the Secretary of State is revising the consent form right now, but I'll make it available as soon as it's revised. Um, and I'll make that public for anyone else who might wanna um, be a candidate for a, a, an open position. So, so at this point, uh, the select board may choose to accept and place articles on the ballot without requiring now this says petitions. I, I think we do need to have, if someone wants to petition us publicly, they need to write up what the article is and they, you need to look at and review that article, um, but it's waiving the signatures on the petition. So the petition would be something where there's like somebody wanting us to put a resolution or something. Right, like Woodbury, was, like Woodbury Fire Department was talking about maybe needing an article. I don't mm -hmm. know if it does, but if it would, it would need, you know, 72 or I can't remember 72 signatures or something. This would if, waive that requirement. But if we vote, but if we decide to put an article on the um, Australian ballot, we don't have to do that. No, you never do. Right. The right. select board can always put something on. Yeah. Okay. So is everybody clear on that? Any questions, clarification on that from Judy? All right. So, um, Select board, would you like to may have a motion to waive the signatures required for special? I I, I guess I I can public, public public petitions, public petitions, 
for example, resolutions? Or would you still want to require the signatures? Discussion? Sharon, how do you feel? Oh, last time I was feeling like I wanted to require some effort, but <laughs> like not at least knocking on your neighbor's door, but I, but I think you guys felt like, no, 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 there's people who really, who are, who, you know, even, even five, five signatures um, is more than we should reasonably ask them to do. So I have a question, Judy, with regard to, let's say somebody sends in a resolution um, and asks us to put it <clears throat> on the warning, do we have to do it? Even if they had signatures, do we have to? So in this I case, don't, don't I don't think signatures. I don't think so. I think you know if it's a frivolous kind of thing, I, I can research that exact statute. I don't have it right in front of me. I don't think you have to. I think the select board has the ultimate. Um, it, I I could be wrong on that. I'll I'll, okay. I'll double I'll double check that. Okay. Cliff, you have thoughts, Rose? Yeah. So uh, go ahead, go ahead Cliff. No, oh. you go ahead. So I was thinking along the same lines of Sharon um, with regards to the signatures, maybe not having them get 72, but maybe five or 10 just to show some effort or that there is some um, agreement with this article or whatever that they want to put on the warning. Um, so, but Sharon, did you just, did you say that you were okay with zero signatures? Uh, well, I'm reading, I just pulled up the statute, placing of articles on a warning for the annual town meeting. Articles may be placed on the warning by a majority vote of the board of selectmen, a petition of at least 5%. Um, articles submitted by petition, that, so those are, those are A and B or one and two. So, it, and, there's, and there's no conjunction. So I think we assume that means or. A majority vote of selectmen or a petition of at least 5%. Articles submitted by petition must be filed with the town clerk not less than 40 days. So we could, could can we read into that the, that we will waive the 5%, but we will require the majority vote of the selectmen on every article. Oh, that's good. I like that. Yeah, but Judy, your, your document here says 47 days before the meeting. And the statute says 40, Sharon? Yep. Okay. Uh, the one online, which you know the bottom the bottom always says this is just for your information you shouldn't rely on it but right. i always do so, we, so it, it sounds like then we could have the option uh or not have the option but we could vote to approve any article that's put on the australian ballot is that what that's saying sharon in the one of the ones you read b yeah it offers the, all I know is what I'm reading in the statutes. So I don't want to overrule all the wisdom of years that you guys have, but articles may be placed on the warning by one, a majority vote of the board of selectmen, two, a petition of at least 5% of the voters registered at the time the petition is submitted. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so what I am suggesting is that we waive two but we retain one so that all of those mm -hmm. I like non signatures that. have to be approved by us. Mm -hmm. Yep, I like that idea. Right. That sounds good. So can we add that? I don't know. Is Katie still there? Yeah, she's still there. So let's add that to the motion. <laughs> Cliff, were you going to just got a cobbled together motion for us? Yeah. Cliff, you, had, you want to comment? Yeah, no, I, I like this approach. It, it, um, I think my issue with requiring any signatures is the same issues as why we agreed we need to go to an Australian ballot. That once again, we're, we'd be putting people at risk and I just, I'm not okay with that. Right. So this uh, proposal 
of um, waiving the signature requirement, but allowing the select board to preserve the right to approve it, I think is a decent uh, solution, decent compromise. Right. Well, you, never know, you never know what kind of resolution we might get. Um, And I think the subtlety is that we we are saying we will approve everything, right? I mean, not not that we reserve the reserve the right to, but that we will actually, to be fair and transparent, and arm's length, everything that comes forward, we will. Judy will package it all up as long as it arrives in her office. Judy, you're going to have to think about the timeline. What's the timeline? Oh, I, I've doubled and tripled checked that, so I think that's correct. But um, yeah. and I it, I think Will Sanning even said that was the date. So I, I think yeah, that, I, I that think January fourteenth. I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, if we get some frivolous resolution, um, we would then be able to put it on or not. Right. I, that makes sense. I, right. Right. I agree. But the judgment of what's frivolous is ours, not right. Judy's. And the result yep. of which is ev absolutely everything comes to us. Right, right, yep. right. And so, so Judy, when I'm saying timeline, if we're gonna, you know, review them, and we could do it as a block, we can say yes, we received them all. Judy got them, gave them to us, you know, a week ago. We've looked at all of them. We approve them as a block. I mean, but you what's be, the timeline? You'll be, re you will be, um, approving the warning, and the ballot. Okay. So right. all of this would be on the warning and on the ballot and nothing would go forward without total select board approval. Okay, and if there's if there's something on there that, that we wanna take off, it's not too late at that point, okay. And the, and the final date, I'm just looking at the um, key deadlines list. Right. We, and have we, to, we have to have that done. We would have to do that by January 14th. No, that's when the deadline is for the peti public petitions. And then there's, you know, some things, some, a couple days to withdraw them, whatever. So really what we're looking at is um, there's a 20, January 25th is the deadline for candidates to submit their consent forms. So mm -hmm. we really can't absolutely finish the warning. We could give you draft, a draft, but the ultimate warning will not be finished until your January 25th select board meeting. And even then, candidates have a couple days to change their mind. Um, mm -hmm. But assuming they don't, we, we would be able to have um, you completely approve the ballot and the warning on the January 25th select board meeting. Hey, we can might you wanna, add that? Can you we might wanna this? give you a, a draft before that so that we're not oh, yeah. like, kind of going way off Base. I would want maybe I don't know if you can do it, but can you get a draft by the eleventh? Uh, yeah, I, mean, I could probably give you I could probably give you a draft tomorrow. <laughs> it's just that, we have know, one. We yeah, have a draft I gave right you. A, I just added the social services to that draft that I sent you earlier, so I could send you another draft that has more complete ones. And because the select board will have to make some decisions about where those well obviously where the budgets go, the budget numbers and the yeah. percentage numbers for delinquent taxes, things like that. And we also have to decide if we're gonna put Woodbury Fire Department's budget on, on the warning. Right. Um, and then what is, so I don't understand, on January 14th, it says deadline for public petitions. What is That's anyone petition? other than the select board who wants to, you know, like, like some, anybody from who's a voter who has an idea that they want the voters to vote on, they have to get it to me by the 14th or they can't, or it's too late. And that includes resolutions. I don't know what you mean by resolutions. You know how we've had articles. resolutions. Are, huh? They're an article, but they're a resolution that somebody wants us to adopt regarding like climate change or something. It's not something that's binding. Um, I think this is just articles. Okay. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't know how resolutions would work in this situation if it's not binding. We're, we're talking about a ballot and a warning. It has yeah. to be voted okay. on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I know, so, you know, we didn't have any last year, but I can remember residents standing up and, you know, like anti-vaccines and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah. kinds of things. Um, 
I kind of hope we don't have any. Why don't we cross that bridge if we have them? <laughs> I can okay. I can look up what's the difference between a resolution and a article in terms of COVID a COVID yeah. um, ballot. Right, because when somebody wants something like that on the warning, don't they have to get the requisite number of signatures? Right. Right. So I think resolutions. I think resolutions are generally from the floor, and articles are on the ballot. Okay. All right. Um, so we sort of have a motion hanging out there. Do you want me to read it? Yes, please. Um, X person made a motion to waive signatures required for public petitions for articles and funding requests for March 2 election, but requires a majority vote of the select board. It requires a majority vote of the select board to approve the articles for the warning. To be placed on the warning. Yeah, that's it, to be placed on the warning. Okay, so um, I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Further discussion or comments? All right, you ready to vote, Cliff? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Rose? Aye. And I'm an aye. Great, there thank we have you. It. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so much. You guys are working under really challenging circumstances. We realize that and we really appreciate it. Yeah, and um, because we're planning in one direction and it is a lot of it depends on the legislature's very last minute decisions. Um, we'll keep you posted, but um, right yeah. now we're, we're putting together all the pieces to potentially mail ballots to everyone. Um, but we realize that we might have to back off that if we don't have enough time to, you know, the legislature doesn't make a decision soon enough. Um, but we'll keep you posted on, on, on any changes on our, on our deadlines and our procedures. Yeah, okay. All right, anything else, Judy, you want to talk about with the board or the board wants that's to ask it. Judy? No, I really appreciate your making these decisions. I think that's these are good solutions and um, this helps us move forward. So All thank righty. you. Thank you so much. Okay. And happy new year. Thank you, Judy. Happy new year. Thanks, Judy. <laughs> thank you. Okay, take care. I think I'm going to exit unless you have any other questions. No, I'm all, I'm set. Everybody else all good? Yep. yep. Okay. Thank good night. you. Thank you so good much. Night. Happy new year. Happy New Year. Take care. All right. So we need to um, work on the budget. So I assume, Cliff, you're in the process of calling that up. Um, yep. So while Cliff's calling that up, what do folks want to do about the Woodbury budget? Do you want to put it on the warning? or do it as we did last year. Um, what's your pleasure? Rose? Do you have any thoughts? Um, I, I would feel fine with just leaving it in the select board budget for this year. Um, that's where the EMFD one is. And, um, you know, yeah, I, yeah. it's already in there. And I, I think we should just leave it in there for right now. Okay, Sharon. Yeah, I'm o I'm okay with that. Um, I do think we should sooner rather than later because it's by I just did the math when I was doing the the minutes from that meeting. It's by April one. We have to let them know right that we want to untangle. So. Um, I'm thinking I, we yeah. need to, I agree with you. Um, I think we need to get the letter out sooner than later. I think they're kind of on notice right. just from our but, meetings that we had with them. And I think we need to have um, Jim do a letter um, and we need to get him the documents so he can look at them so he understands what we're asking, that we're asking them to um, open, about, open back up the agreement. Yeah, um, or, or yeah, or yeah, that we won't, we, we will, we are not, yeah, I mean, that, that's a, that's a discussion we have to have, but the most important thing is getting them 
notice that you want that out. And we and we will not subscribe to an auto renew. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, all right, Cliff, your thoughts on Woodbury? Yeah, the, the time we broke it out as a separate item is because there was a big ask involved. It's not a huge change this go around. So I would support leaving it in with the select board budget. Yeah, and I'm in agreement. So can we, um, we already, Katie, did we already vote to approve the Woodbury budget? Let me look back. Do we I don't think do we necessarily have to vote. I think well, we, we just did agreed. On, we, did, we, did, we did on the EMFD one. We had to vote to approve it. But that's, we're actually, we are approving, don't we have, I don't know, maybe we didn't have to do that either. It's, sep it's a separate board. They, I don't know, they we rely we on usually. Yeah. Well, we've usually voted to approve their budget. I just want to be fair that we're doing the same for both. But I'm. We can I'm make fine a motion to. We can make a motion and approve Woodbury's proposal. Budget request yeah. to be included in yeah. our select board budget. Is that a Is motion, that a motion, Rose? Rose? <laughs> sure. Okay. Is that I'll a second, second Cliff? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Five. All right. Let's vote, Rose. Aye. I'm an aye. Sharon? Aye. Cliff? Aye. That's good, because that, that way we're just, you know, we're applying the same standard to both. All right, so have you got the budget ready for us to look at? And at some point in reviewing the budget, we're going to need to go in executive session, but we can do what we can do publicly first. So I think um, we had asked a bunch of questions. Hopefully you've had a chance to look at this budget. It is, the percentage of change is zero with the figures that are in there. So that's flat, flat budget for the select board. Is everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. yep. And everything is, everything is in there, right? It's not because yep. we have some there's no, no, there's no missing figures. Yep. Okay, next up. All right, why is it not going? Oh, oh, I see. We're looking only at the select board. Okay, so I want to reserve my, my approval until I understand that we're approving, what we're approving in the global. Okay. Um, all right, next up. Grants, that's kind of a, nothing to do there. Um, town clerk, that's a 4% increase. Um, what you're not sure. seeing in this version of the spreadsheet is any rows that have to do with wages, because that's going to come under the um, as I right. understood it, we would do that in executive session. Right, but the per percentage of the change of the budget for the town clerk is still going to be 4%, right? There are Plus additional whatever. lines under the town clerk that you're not seeing. So this figure. I'm, I'm talking about that portion of the town clerk's budget, excluding salaries. No, this figure would include salary. It's just, you don't see those lines in here right now. Denise, if so you look what? at the, if you look at the numbers that Cliff has, if they're, that are highlighted in gray, land record books 580 or 550 plus digitizing 10,000 plus digitizing survey max 400, right away you realize, oh, that's less than $11,000. But the total in the, in that section is 70. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, I see what you mean. That's because there's salaries hiding behind that. And so the 4%, I'm assuming, Cliff, um, comes, is, is that, that we're not approving anything here because we haven't approved the salary numbers underneath. So we should just skip this one. We could say well, we're well, fine it, with the land record books going up 5%. Well, 
Right, we're going to have discussion about salaries and wages separately. We're just reviewing the other line items that aren't related to that to see if we need to make any changes to them. Right, so are like we fine with like, anything? It seems like this section then should be, I don't know. Okay, never mind. It's, it's, it's fine. So, so we're only looking at $11,000 now. We're looking right. at $30 difference. That all looks yeah. fine to me. Okay, listers requested an increase for mapping. Um, so it says two years of changes um, and you probably saw Jan's email. So um, we have to look back, I have to look back at her email. But she, what they don't understand is that if we put in the full amount for the two years in the FY22 budget, and they don't spend that full amount, whatever's left over doesn't get held in reserve for the next year. We have to budget each year on its own for the mapping. So we need to plug in the numbers um, that Jan sent us in the email. I'm just looking for it. Um, I'm not. She's saying that the mapping, um, oh, she doesn't give us the figures. Denise, the mapping, when did that, when did that email come? I'm not finding one from her. Today. Um, let me see. Maybe it's Is one it of those folder? ones like, you know, I don't know. But anyways, what, so I'm trying to explain to the listers that we can only budget for FY22's mapping. And yeah, FY22's mapping. And then the next time we'd have to, we'd have to um, budget for the second year of mapping in the next year's budget. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I had what a is she saying now? Well, I, I wrote back to her and I, I still don't think she gets it. I'm going to, I'll call her tomorrow and talk with her and, and get the, what, what amount do you need for FY22 for mapping? And what amount are you gonna need for our FY23 for mapping, basically? Mm -hmm. I had a question. Yes, ma'am. So the way I read this is that's the one year cost to map two years worth of changes that have occurred in town, not that's the cost of mapping for two years. That's, I interpret that as this is the one year cost to include in the fiscal year 22 budget for two years worth. We haven't done this mapping work for two years and now we've accumulated two years worth of mapping that needs to get updated. That's the way I interpret that. So I was okay, wondering, well if I was I'll, back if that's a, um, if that could be, but that's why I need to double check with Jan and find out yep. exactly what it is she needs. So we're all on the same page. Yep. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if we, if, if that, if Rose is right, I definitely don't have that email. Um, so if Rose is right. I didn't get then, the email either. Huh. I'll have to look and see who she sent it to. So if that's correct, then we've got $1,600, 83%, but it's $1,600. So it's got very little influence on the overall. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I still, so anyways, I, we just need yeah. clarification. What she really, what, what is she really looking for? And I don't know that. I'm clear Rose could be right, but I don't know that. So we need to double check the figure and I didn't have a chance to do that before we met. Okay, can you, you ready to move on? Mm -hmm. Audit, is there any way, can you make it a little bigger, Cliff? How's that? That's better. A little bigger? 
I don't know what everybody else want it bigger. Okay, audits. That's not changing. Election expenses are going down. What's the bottom line here on this one? It's going down. Okay. Um, taxes, dues, assessments, and we have in from um, I think we're I think we're all set there. Yeah, we we just we're taking a guesstimate on the the county tax line. Yeah, because we haven't been in. And we never yet. we never get that. That always comes late. But we did, didn't we just get the word from uh, CVSWMD that there's no change? Yeah. So that number that's that, in there that's is confirmed. correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Zoning. Hang on a second. I just want to make a note. Cassandra. And was that today, Denise? Yeah, that was from Bill Powell today, and Sandra got the emails. Okay, let me get back okay, over here. Up. Um. Fire and ambulance, we already talked about that. Um, police, I haven't heard anything that, um, you know, the sheriff's contract is what we decided we want it to be. If we want it to be a thousand or 10,000. So that's up to us to fill in an amount and they base what they can do for us on whatever amount we put in. And you'll notice in FY20, we only spent $2,800. So if we leave it as is, there's basically no change, the bottom line. Does the service say, change if we flatline? In other words, do their costs evolve and we get less service for the same price? Um, every year, there we did a, their contract in, I want to say July or August of this year, and their prices went up a little bit, um, but it, we still have the bottom line amount that we're able to spend. Animal control, are you all, everybody ready to move on? Animal yeah. control should be the same. Yeah, we don't usually get we usually get something from um, Central Mount Humane Society. I want to say in January, and last it seems like last one of the years we recently saved money. We used to be like budgeting two thousand dollars, and they changed the way that they did um, billing. So now they're it's asking for like seven hundred. Um, Cliff, do you want to make a note there to ask Sandra, have we gotten anything from CVHS about changes in the amount that they're going to request? Hmm. 
Okay, oh. Planning Commission, I think there was no change here. <coughs> no yep. change. Yeah, same. Conservation Fund, last time we talked about reducing it from eight to five. Is that still everybody's, what everybody's still thinking? Yeah, well, I, this is the question we'd asked, and we've got this information now that is <coughs> the current balance. Yeah. I think, I, I mean, I think that's a good, that's a good place, but I want to see where we fall bottom line. Yeah, I agree. The swim program. Um, yeah, because they have a swim fund. And we got an explanation from Katie about the Vanguard fund as opposed to the uh, swim program reserve fund. Yep. So we looked at budgeting 1500 instead of 2000 for FY22. And that still gives them money in their um, swim fund if the $1,500 is approved, uh, you know, close to 10,000. Yep. Okay. What's, what's the bottom line on the hall? Okay. Everybody's okay with that one. Yeah. These are all fixed. We've received the invoices. So are we saving, so we're saving money. Um, Cause remember share, um, Sandra said we could reduce the amount we put in the HRA. Where is that line? Uh, that's farther down. This is all farther about, down. yeah. That, okay. All right, so that, there's nothing really new to review on the debt portion, we've done that. No, actually it'll be up above and it'll be down below because it's part of wages. So you'll okay. see some in the, the, tre in the um, town clerk section and you'll see some in the highway section. Okay. When we get, when we're ready for that discussion. Wait, we'll see some what? About the HRA and all that stuff. Along with wages and salaries. Yep. Okay. All right, so there's the bottom line on that, but that could change depending on other things. Right. Um, okay, social services. Wait, this general, that we haven't, um, general government does not include highway, right? Right. No, it does not. That'll come okay. next or one of the next. So, okay. yeah, and this one mostly this one is, is what it pretty is. Pretty much flat line, except we've got the addition of the Friends of Callis Town Hall doing a request for 3000 So that yep. would represent a 6% increase. Yeah, and I don't think that, I think the deadline for getting those requests in has come and gone, correct? It has. Yeah. Deadline for nonprofit funding requests was December 15th. Yep. Okay. So that's not going to change unless we. Um, Whack it. Yeah. Okay, next. The cemetery. Toilet I had a question. Ready. Yes, ma'am. So your friends of the town hall is not on this list of social service appropriations? No, it is. Yeah, it is. It right is. It's, it's new. 
Where is it? It's right here, line 214. It's right here, line 214. I'm looking at mine on? on my computer, and it's a PDF. Can you see it on the screen? Can you see it on the screen, Rose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For... Yeah, so I think it's just not on the version that I'm looking at on my computer. Yeah, this is so, a later this, edition. Yeah, Sandra just updated this. Um, was it today? Yeah. Today, yeah. So is your is yours version four? Um, I can't this tell. Is, the print is too small. This is just. Do we all do we all have that one in our email? Yeah, it's in it's in it's in the folder. Because I'm looking at version three dated on the 22nd. Right. This is a modified version of version three that I created for us to use. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. Because I just I thought this version doesn't have the friends group and I got nervous. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well, the friends group got a request in by the deadline. OK, good. Thank you. Good work. So this is our document that we can play around with? Exactly. Okay. That's when I do a separate one because, you know, Sandra's always worried about formulas getting bollocks if we make changes to her master file. So I create right. a secondary one, give it a unique name, each date that we review these. Okay, very I good. I send that to her as also as a PDF so that she doesn't have to worry that things got hunkered and mixed up. Okay, so cemetery, we already talked about this. They're not asking for any increases. Yep. Can you guys hear my special needs guy getting ready for bed? Can you hear him? <laughs> okay, good. Uh, okay, so we're now on. Now we're on highway. Can we look at and, Toby's email together? Yep. Do you? Um, yes. Now, what did I do with that? I printed off a hard copy because I don't think Cliff can do two screens at once. <clears throat> Which, the email with Toby's re reply, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. OK, I just copied his comments into this document. Oh, okay, so we don't works. need it separately. That's great. That works. Thank you, Cliff. You're welcome. You'll see them in green. Oh, TT. Nice cost, cost going background. up from vendor. Yep. And that's so, only in the version that you have, not in our version. That's okay. correct, because I added it this afternoon to this document that we're looking at right now. Does anybody okay. think $5,000 is a lot of money for uniforms? I mean, I don't know anything about uniforms and stuff, but it seems like a lot. Basically, what you have to think about is um, it's like going to the dry cleaners yep. because they're cleaned with chemicals. It's like having your dress shirts go into the cleaners. That's what uniforms are. It's so yeah, it's I mean, all I know like what, some, I know what uniform, chemical thing. I know, I know yeah. what uniforms are, but I just thought, seems like it's i don't know it just seems like a lot of money but 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 what you're saying rose and cliff i guess is that it's not the uniforms themselves it's the cleaning right well right. it yeah. it does supply them with the uniforms themselves yeah what they when you have a um uniform service like they have unifirst each um person on the road crew say they have seven pants and seven shirts so you have that and then the next week they come once a week and they take your dirty seven outfits or five outfits and they give you seven more and so you have a circulation so basically they're dry cleaning your dirty clothes so yeah, it's now like i get going like, yeah i, I get that expensive. it just seems it just seems like i don't know it just seems like a lot but yeah it's expensive because it's the chemicals they use to clean Is this in, does anyone know if this includes the, the boots? No, because we give them a boot allowance, remember? Yeah, no, uniforms is just unifirst. 
Well, the boot allowance must come out of that one, though. Yeah, out of that's that line. the thing is, what line does that allowance come from? Um, good question. Good maybe question. We'll, yeah, maybe we'll see it when we're going through here. Okay. Municipal roads, general permit, we don't have much control over that. <clears throat> Okay, so there was the bottom line for that one. Now we go to maintenance. And this was one of the questions we asked him, why is it going up? Mm -hmm. And that's his answer. Actu but we yeah, have but the budget not, to actual it's, for... But it's not going right? up. It's not going up though. No, we it's flatlined going. all of these figures where they did increase. Oh, them. so he was asking for 20 and we put it back to 15. Right, and then okay, I, right. Them that I and said, okay, why are you wanting to go up to 20K here? Why do you want to go to 72K here, et cetera, et cetera. So do we want to put the 20K back in? Because I guess um, with McCullough closing, the trucking is going to be more expensive. Probably buying the sand is going to be more expensive than just having it like right in our backyard. Yep. I, I, what I struggle with is the arbitrariness of the numbers. You know, it's like we, we've been trying to sharpen our pencils and be, um, how, you know, just sharpen our pencils and not just shooting in the dark and 15,000 to 20,000 is is like might go up 33 <laughs> percent increase because it might go up I'd like to see you know I think to me what I'm more focused on is rather than where it goes up and by how much specifically is when you add up all of these onesie twosie, might go up, might go up. I and I don't remember what was the increase, the bottom line increase in the highway budget. Well, let's go through and see what answers we got from Toby. Um, yeah. So the next one that we had the question on was um, sand, and that, and that's another one to Sharon's point that it's who knows where this figure came from. Um, bridges and culverts. Our next question was um, crack and seal. Yep. But I don't know. You see, and his answer is actually 14K and needs to be done every year. So then why have all these other years, even in FY21 and FY20, we didn't, we didn't budget for the full amount. Yeah. <laughs> right? Doesn't make any yeah. sense. Well, it's because there was slush and looseness in other line items. And he'll tell you it's a guide. And at the end, as long as the budget comes in under budget or at budget. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the on the road salt, we have um, an actual answer. Yeah. So the actual cost, and it's in the FY. You can see it in the FY twenty budget was twenty five thousand. We're not done with mm -hmm. FY twenty twenty one yet. Okay, we'll go back, scroll down a little bit. Uh, the okay. actual is through what date do we think? That's the for actual FY twenty twenty. You mean the actual? You mean FY twenty twenty? That's that's done. That's booked out. That fiscal year is closed. Oh, okay, right. It's the, it's right, not because we're still we're in June 30th. Right, because right now we're in FY21. 
it's not a year to date. That would be nice to have. Uh, so, okay, so road salt, he wanted it to go to 30. It went to 25 last year. Yeah. Well, no, he was asking for 30 this year. Right. And last road year it was 25. 25. So that's probably he's figuring it's going to go up a little bit, which it probably will. I think I heard yeah. there was a sh there's a shortage of salt. So that could very well be right. That's yeah, he I mean I understand what he's doing. He's he's taking it up by round numbers. Right. But but 5000 is a 20% increase. Right. I mean I think he's budget. doing the best I think he's doing the best he can to try to put in some figures but we don't want to we want to make sure we're not having another one of those slush fund things right and, and the so thing about we, the road so oh, i'm sorry no no go go ahead rose i was going to say the thing about the road salt is that's only for three miles of the county road and the little section on lightning ridge yep you don't put road salt on any of the gravel roads so that's right it does seem like a big amount for you know three or four miles of road yeah it so does. If, i have no idea how much it costs though if we had if we so if twenty five thousand fifty dollars and fifty eight cents the actual from the last fiscal year if we go five percent over that it's twenty six three oh three so so you know yeah. even if we go if we go 10% over that. That's 27.5. That's 10% over last year. Yeah. Well, let's go I through think the rest of this. That sounds more reasonable. Yeah. You want to go through the rest of this and get to the bottom line and then go back up and put, plug some numbers in and see what we get? Yeah. Okay. So according to, if we left some of the stuff the way we put it back in, it would be 11% decrease. So let's go back up to where we started to question. Well, hang on, but let's look at the vehicles too, because we want to look at the whole thing, right? Because one could, could, in theory, I mean, they, we want, I want to know what the bottom line is. So, and we had 27,500 to or, level to that would make it level funded because it was down 11 percent, we could build 27.5 back in and still be level funded i'm not saying we would do that i'm saying that there's that much wiggle room in that section of the budget yeah so there's the um sh that's the garage He did not answer our question on communications. I thought he I thought he mentioned something. I, I saw a comment on one of the versions of these, but I thought it was one that Sandra might have said about that uh, it includes the additional phones and stuff. Yeah. But it's okay. Fact of the matter is the actual runs higher, so why haven't you increased what you're mm -hmm. asking here? Right. Yeah, because communications, FY twenty, the bottom line was forty two hundred. And Sandra indicated that it's running more. She anticipates it'll run more than a thousand for FY twenty one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand that either. I know we, we in, in the next the next line though, we broke out communications from the radios and the pagers because the communication, correct me if I'm wrong, includes the security. That's what I was just thinking. Well we had oh, a no, big bump in But look look Rose, in, the security line shows nothing. I know. So I think maybe it got, 
yeah, it got lumped into that communications because they do have a security thing at the town garage, right? Right. Yeah. Well, I think we have to put in a number that's more realistic there than if, mm -hmm. if the actual for FY20 was 4,200, we're, we're routinely underfunding that line item, which doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. All right, so the bottom line there is, there it is. Um, Okay, next up is grants. Okay, everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Here's yep. all of our equipment. Is that the end? Yep. Okay. Let's see. Let me so do you want to go back up and fill in some numbers into the highway? Let me just expand these columns so you can see the numbers. Yep. Um, yeah, with, with the understanding that we still have to look at it in executive session we have to look at personnel and executive session so that yeah so i would consider okay. what we're going to do now absolutely just a just placeholders playing with numbers yeah i think that's pretty clear okay so here for security oh okay we're going to do that all right all right, so they had proposed a $500 increase to $5,500. Yeah. Is that what we want to plug in for consideration right now? Yeah, I mean, if that's what the contract is asking for, we don't have much choice. Well, we don't know that for sure. That looks a little no, vague. No, but... no Toby says costs going up from vendor. Right, but he doesn't say we have an invoice they're going up. I, I don't know. You could be right, but I, I don't necessarily take that away from his note. Oh, I guess that, I he, that he has a specific. Okay, uh, well, we'll leave it fifty five hundred for now, and that's it's that's ten still... percent. That would be that would be a lot for a vendor to say. Hey, we're going up ten percent next year in one run. You want to put a anyway, different number in? Uh, no, I mean, not necessarily right now, but I like leaving the pink box there so we know as, yep. a, you know, as a flag. Yep. Equipment hired. What were they, they, were, they were asking for it to go up to 20, 20 20K. Yep. And actual for FY20 was 20,000. Mm -hmm. I want to put 20,000 in there and just see where that gets us on the bottom line. <coughs> okay, next. Um, so I want to go with 72K here. I don't know where they get that figure from. Divided 60,000 by five. I don't know. <laughs> what if we put in 6,500? Just to see where that. 65,000? 60, yeah, I mean 65,000. Yep. Yeah. I like 6,500. <laughs> well, yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't think it's realistic, but I like it. Yeah. Okay. This was uh, when we talked what? about, okay, so it's always 14,000. Why do we never budget that? Right. 
Yeah, I just and I don't know where that money has come from before. If FY twenty we paid fourteen seven, we didn't budget for it. Where did the money come from to pay for it? Right, we would not have knocked it down that much. No. Should we put in the actual figure of fourteen seven? That's about what fifteen is that he asked for. Yeah. yeah. Let's do 15 and see what it looks like at the bottom. You can always go back and yep. ask Sandra to give us the actuals that we've spent on gravel for the past few years because the auditors have been suggesting we reduce it for at least the past couple of audits because we well, have the ability to knock it down even more. Right. Well, we can see where what we spent in FY20. I'm assuming it's probably similar. Mm -hmm. And instead of, I think we put it at, didn't we put in the 80? We did. That seems, that seems he, reasonable. He, they wanted to flatline this. They had 95 here. Right. They wanted to keep it at 95, even though FY20, right. we only spent 75. Right. So we put it back down to 80. Yep. Because the, the auditors keep saying, why do we budget so much? And that, maybe that's where some of this other money to cover like crack and seal has come from the bottom mm. line. Mm. Okay. Do we so, want to, do we want to leave it at 80 though? Or do we want to go back down to like 70, 75, five, something closer to 2020? Why don't we say 76? Okay. okay. Yep. Thank you. Road salt. What do you want to do about that? You want to? You want to try like maybe twenty six or twenty seven? Yeah. This is where Sharon had done some math. Uh, we're at twenty five now. I gotta go get my water. Okay. Twenty seven five is about a ten percent increase, I think. Yeah, 27.5 is a 10% increase. And you had also said, uh, didn't you do like a 3% projection as well? Which put us closer to like 26. Hang on, I gotta, I being sloppy with my punching numbers here. 25.8, so 26, yeah. Okay, you wanna put that in? Yeah. Okay, road signs. They wanted to go to 5,000. Signs are cheap, though. You gonna start with that song again? On the other side, it didn't say anything? No, no, the, the song we referenced last time we looked at this. Yeah, don't start, though, Cliff, because <laughs> I already can hear well, it in my head. As soon as I you can't. said that song. Oh. That's because you're too young, Sharon. Sharon's the one who brought it up last time. 
<laughs> I, but I forgot. Yeah. Somebody has to uh, remind me. A song about signs being everywhere. Oh, yeah. Signs, now, yeah. Signs, so you said, yep. Soaking up the scenery, messing with my mind. Okay. Do this. So they're asking for that. 3,000? They were asking for 5,000. Oh, okay. Right. I think, I think three sounds reasonable. We'll leave it at three. Yeah, and guardrails, it seems like we don't quite budget enough. What if we put guardrails up to 1,500? Everybody good with that? Okay, vehicle equipment repairs. They wanted 65,000. Yep. But, if, but it seems to me like if, if we get a, a truck, and I'm sure Alfred will find one, that hopefully we won't need 65,000. We only, in FY20, we spent 38.8. Mm hmm. So I'm thinking keeping it at I'm th I'm thinking keeping it at fifty five seems reasonable. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Well, you know how much Alfie loves his trucks, and he's going to be looking for one for sure. Yeah. So that's why I asked that question I asked earlier. Yeah, good question. Oh. Yeah, I, I I think 55 is reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Unless we need to cut it. Okay. You want to put the date in there, Cliff? No, uh, it's kind of there, but. Oh, it's kind of there. Okay. I'll make it clear that. Must be. Okay, that's good. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Welcome. All right. All right. Now, what do we want to do about this communications? I think we've got to up it. <clears throat> what happens if we put in 4,200, which is actually what we spent in FY20? Or do we want to split it out? And have some in the security line. There That's what I was thinking. Thing. That's what's happening. No, uh, security got moved into another line, so it's just there because it has to be on for like three years, and then it goes away. Because I think we and somehow we, put. I think we somehow moved it from security to communications a while ago. Why we did that, I don't know, unless we figured it was all the same same stuff because the communications is separate from the radios and the pagers. Do you think Sandra would know what she codes to that line? Probably, yeah, she would. Is it because security, I forgot what we said security is, but is it like an alarm at the town garage that runs through the internet? Uh, they have, it's Seaco Securities at the garage, just like it's at the hall. 
but and in, the, and in the town budget we put security as security right but in 2020 it got this line for the highway got moved into another line and we don't know what that is yeah i'm getting too tired to care very much yeah and we still need to go in executive session so let's well, see where we're at. Let's just, yeah, that's what I was going to suggest because everything else I think is pretty much what it is. And with those changes, that's what we see. The overall is a 6% decrease. Mm -hmm. Katie's getting tired too. All right, do you want to move when, from to. What's the date? What's the date that we have to put our final stamp of approval on this? Is it the. Fourth. Next, next meeting. Fourth. Okay. All right, so we got to go into executive session and make some decisions about salaries. Yep. Or get close to a decision. So I would move yep. that we go into executive session to discuss personnel matters per the usual statutory reference, one VSA 313A3. At 9.13 p.m. Is there a second? So move. Okay, I made the motion, so I is that a did, second, Sharon? Yeah, yeah Sharon okay. could second it. All right, sure. uh, Rose, you wanna, Rose, you wanna vote? Aye. I'm an aye, Sharon? Aye. Cliff? Aye. All right, thank you so much, Katie. And everybody. And you're right. available on the- Thank you. And you're available. Thank you.